All right, this is Peter Schiff, and I've come down here to Occupy Wall Street to represent the 1% and see if I can have a dialogue with the other 99%, maybe see if we can find some common ground, and maybe I can help educate the people uh, to direct their protests to the more appropriate source, because it's my opinion that they shouldn't be here occupying Wall Street. They should be in Washington occupying Pennsylvania Avenue. They should be protesting in front of the White House, in front of the Federal Reserve, in front of Congress, in front of the Supreme Court, not down here uh, protesting capitalism. Capitalism is the only solution that they have to their problems. It's not capitalism that has failed them. It's socialism, it's corporatism, it's crony capitalism, it's fascism. That is the problem. Capitalism is the solution if we can only fully embrace it. Anyway, we've got a few people around here, and I'm wondering who in particular would like to address any of their grievances and maybe tell me what they're hoping to get from Occupy Wall Street, and maybe we can uh, uh, maybe come to some solutions or put them on a better path. Anyway, I don't know if you're filming the crowd. We have a question over here. All right, what's your name? Uh, Margo. Margo, where are you from? Portland, Oregon. And you came all the way here for the protest? or? Well, you... I actually went to Germany first. Uh -huh. And then I have a friend in Brooklyn, so I thought, well, I'll stop to see her. But you didn't and... protest in Germany, did you? Oh, no, that all happened right, so just... after you guys started here. All right. But I went to the, the book, book trade fair. Uh, but, I mean, I have a simple question. Okay. Who are you? Peter Schiff. Okay, I'm a businessman. I own uh, many companies, but one of them is a security broker dealer. Uh, so I met. Well, I have an office in Manhattan, but uh, okay. I have offices all around the country. Okay. All right. Yeah. yeah. But I'm in, I'm definitely in the one percent. I could be in the one percent of the one yeah. percent. So I'm here. Yeah. And uh, you know, and I as I said, I have a lot of sympathy for the people who are protesting. Yeah. But they're protesting, you know, they're, they're directing their anger in the wrong direction. Uh, One sec. Yeah. Okay. Um, and Twitter and Julian Assange and all those kind of things that are coming together. Uh, well, uh, is that that forms a way to have a forum, get the conversation, well, and to getting the secrets out? There's well, so many secrets. Well, did you have a question or did you have a concern? Uh, how do you get the secrets out? Because I don't know I'm what gonna, secrets you're talking about. I'm trying right. to get the truth out and explain yeah, well, because I'm one of the few people in the country that actually predicted the economic crisis, yeah. the housing bubble, the financial crisis. I warned about it for years. Well, Nobody worked, listened. That was a problem. I work for uh, state government, uh -huh. and I can tell you there are a lot of secrets, and it's uh -huh. the secrets uh, that that we don't know, yeah. and then that's hard to work against because yeah. uh, the the, uh, the first people who aren't yeah. inside the government. Don't know right. where the secrets right. are, where the gaps are. All right. So how do we find out? Well, I don't know what secrets. secrets you're talking about. I'm just trying to, you know, the, the, the secret is that it's not capitalism that's the problem here. If we had capitalism, there'd be nothing to protest. All these people would have jobs. Well, it's because of right. government that people don't have anything to do. But anyway, so what's your name? My name is Derek Brown, and I'm I'm speaking from another perspective. Uh, oh, there's, we're meshing. It's people apparently from all states, nations, genders, Where are you from, colors, Derek? and creeds. I'm from the Bronx. Okay. Okay. I have this thing that imagine compassionate capitalism. Is there such a thing? Could there be such a thing? Well, it's the most compassionate system I know by definition. Your definition being from coming from the one percent now I have no problem with you having money the problem is there's those who are destitute and discontent with their lot in life right but what is the solution how, how, how if you don't have money now how are you gonna get it and how do people that have money you know in, in a capitalist society where you know people are free to spend their money where they want let, let me finish one second the way a capitalist gets rich is to figure out what the consumers want and sure. give it to them and do it at a less expensive price at a better quality. So the way a capitalist gets rich is by enriching everybody else. Okay, so that's what you have to say as part of the 1%. Again, I have no problem with you having a lot of money and you having something to give and you, uh, uh, you getting what you deserve from your labors. And your endeavors. And what's your but? What is your? But my thing is, if you make a hundred million, imagine how many jobs could be created if you just made 
50 million. Well, and, uh, and, and, listen, now, now, when I say compassionate capitalism, I'm talking about this. People who make allowances for those who have not. But what you're forgetting is if I make 100 million, I had to create a lot of jobs to make that money. That's the point. When the capitalist no, is see, making there's a money. Thing called greed. And the problem with. Well, we're all, we all greedy. Everybody. No, no, we're not. Well, you cannot say that we're all greedy. Oh. You cannot. Well, you, don't you don't you want things greedy. for yourself? You don't want more. You don't want better things for yourself. We better all life? doing. That's the problem. Right. We or some of us are simple people. We just want a place to live. We just want some food in our refrigerator. And capitalism. We just want to take and care capitalism. Of our kids. Capitalism is the best way to get those things. I mean, oh. you're standing here. You're not naked. You have clothes on. The people that made those clothes did it to make a profit. And to make a profit, they had to make clothes that you can afford. Capitalism is why we have Who's food. Who's say why... I didn't get these clothes for free? But some, no, somebody made them. Somebody had to produce Listen, them. Listen, my friend, you need to open your mind. It is open. understand that all these people are not in this park because of your perceptive no. perspective. So you're no. saying capitalism is the only way to produce things. Right, well, I will Do I've, you think that socialism well, is wrong? It is wrong. It's absolutely wrong. But first, Why? I employ I employ 150 and people. Well, I employ 150 people, right? I've created those jobs. How many jobs did you create? How many people do you employ? How much money have I given you? But you haven't given me anything. But I mean, the point is, I've created 150 jobs. I'm I'm writing paychecks every given, week. I haven't given you anything. What, what are you? What are you? Everybody in this park has contributed to your fat ass no, bank account. Haven't. How do you figure? In one way, shape, form, how, or fashion. How do, you, how do you figure that? You know something. You need to open up were, your mind. Were the people in this park? Were they people? Were the people in this park working 20-hour days or at my um, when I started I'm my company sure in my in my one-bedroom apartment? I'm quite sure were they there? there? No, they weren't. I'm quite Who? sure they have been. Who? I'm quite because sure all these that people are young jobless. there's other people that you need yeah, to but speak how, to. But how are because you going to get mind, jobs unless you have capitalists you that are going to employ you? You need to open the of your mind to understand yeah. other perspectives. And, and just, and just so that. you know, how much of my total income right now do you think the government takes every year from me? How listen, much do you think? Listen, but just you know, guess. I'm oblivious. But give me a so, guess. But there's other people that need to... Does anybody here want to guess what percentage of my income the government takes from me right now? Why we're here. Huh? That's pretty we close. Wanna, we don't play a guessing game. We have no. data. Yeah. Give us your data. No, but it, the government takes. How much do you 40, make? Doesn't matter what I make. The no, government no, we takes half know. of it. We At a, know. every dollar I earn, I get to spend forty-five cents. The government spends fifty-five cents. So I'm already. The government's already taken more than half my money. I don't know so, how much more. So where do you but, stand concerning our? Do you, I don't lobby anybody. Where do you stand concerning our plight? I, I feel for your plight. I, I, I wish that we had a more vibrant economy. The problem is the government is taxing and regulating the economy to death. The government is not letting capitalism work. You guys are protesting all the bailouts on Wall Street. I was with you. I was against the bailouts even before they were proposed. I knew these banks were going to fail. I wanted them to fail. I didn't want the government to bail them out. That's not capitalism. Capitalism would have let the banks fail. A lot of people on Wall Street would have lost their jobs if we had capitalism well, what instead. Have the United States if that happened? It would have been in better shape. We, we would have taken the medicine. The economy would have survived without the government bailouts. Absolutely, the government, the economy is in trouble because the government. Um, I'm here. I've been observing this for a few days. Uh, I'm actually from a libertarian mindset. I know you're back around Paul and a lot of that sort of stuff. Um, I, I've actually been amazed how much overlap I saw. I saw a lot of end the Fed stuff. I saw a lot of things that actually overlap where I thought I was walking into a less leftist movement. Do you see this as a left wing movement or do you see this more as a populist, apolitical movement? Well, you know, I think that people, especially young people, yeah. have a right to be pissed off because I'm they're paying getting social security and paying all this stuff. Well, not only seeing. that, look, we've sold the young generation short. Yeah. We've put them through these government schools. We've loaded them up with debt. You know, one of the, one of the problems people want is the forgiveness of the student loans. Why are there all these student loans? It's because the government guaranteed them. If the government minded its own business, then nobody could get a student loan. Well, there's loan. never been a so, monopoly without government involvement. No, but my point is, if it wasn't for the government, yeah. college would be cheap. The tuitions would be low. It's only because the government subsidizes it and guarantees the loans. But who gets the shaft here? It's the kids. The, the colleges get all the money, and they stick the kids with the bill. They graduate with these worthless degrees with 100000 or more in debt, and they can't get a job. And if they get a job, they're paying massive taxes. They're paying Social Security taxes to support a generation that voted in this Ponzi scheme before any of these people were born. They're yeah. paying income taxes. If there's anything left, they got to pay back their student loans, and they can't even discharge them. Uh, in bankruptcy, and if they die, 
Their parents are stuck with them. So I think, I mean, you know, I think. All the blame on government. Of course, so, the government did it. Well, uh, uh, well, it's not all the blame of the government. Well, who who else did it? You who guys guaranteed? Work together, you guys are part of this. No, no. Team. Wall Street is. I agree. Who lobbies? Who, who, who no, you're right. But why why are there lobbyists? Why are lobbyists successful? Because government has power and influence. The problem is the government. If the government couldn't dole out special favors and subsidies, there would be no lobbyists. So what you've got to do is get, take the power away from government and bring it back to the people. No, then we'd have freedom. Then we'd be a wealthy country like we used to be before the government came in and screwed it all up. You know, we created the wealthiest society that the world had ever seen. The standard of living, you go back to 1950, the average American had a standard of living nobody could match anywhere in the world. That's not, that's not true today, because we don't lead the world in freedom. We lead the world now in big government and regulation and central banking. That is the problem. We have to go back to the Constitution. We have to go back to our roots. Of course, but why? Well, because we no, no, but the government made it so expensive to hire Americans. That's the problem. All the taxes, all the laws, minimum wage, occupational licensing, payroll taxes, unemployment taxes, all, all the potential litigation. The government has made it so expensive and so risky to hire. Look, I hire people, right? And I, a lot of times I'm reluctant to hire people. I try to avoid it because the problem is the government makes it too expensive. I know a lot of small businessmen that do everything they can not to hire people because they don't want the headache from the government. They don't want the legal liability. They don't want the government dragging them into court and suing them because they don't think they hired somebody the right way or maybe they fired them for the wrong reason. You know, it, Pete, the government is looking over the shoulder of every businessman and it is hard enough to start a business without the government complicating it with taxes and regulations. You know, when people start a small business, they put it all on the line. It's their money. They have to pay everybody first. They pay their employees. They pay their rent. They only make money if there's something left over. You know, and the government makes it very hard so people don't start businesses. And if they do, they try not to hire people because they, they can't take the cost. And if businesses are moving their jobs, I recently set up a, a bank in the Caribbean. I'm moving some, some of my employees to Singapore. I would rather keep all my employees here, but I don't have a choice. The government is making me uncompetitive. The rules and regulations are so expensive that the only way I can stay in business is to move part of my business to other countries. You know, but I would rather do all my business here if think, it weren't for the I government. Peter, Peter, put the mic in front of everybody speaking. Yeah. I, th I think it's the corporations that get greedy and decide that, oh, why would we pay someone $8 an hour if we can get someone for 50 cents an hour in no. India? And no, that's and why it has you move to do over with not total because of the government. It, we, the, first of all, the corporations are just people. It's people that own stock, right? They're, and if you go back to the 1950s, for example, America paid the highest wages in the world, much higher than we do today. Yet we produced the cheapest stuff. Our products cost less than products produced anywhere else in the world. And so we sold them all around the world. Why, how was it that we could pay the highest wages but produce the lowest cost stuff? It was because we had more capital. We had more capital because we had lower taxes and fewer regulations. So we gave our workers tools and machines to make them more productive. We don't have that anymore. We are not as productive as other countries. That is the problem. But you have to ask yourselves why. How did we have such a huge lead and how did we blow it? What did we do wrong? And what we did wrong was more government, more rules, more regulations, more taxes that made us less competitive. That's why the jobs are gone. So it's Hold on, hold on. Is it safe to say that you're the only one here who's anti-government? I don't know. There's probably a lot of people here who are... All right. How many know. people here blame the problems on the government? I do. Uh, partially. Uh, what do you count the Federal Reserve? Yes, the the Federal yes definitely the Federal Reserve. It's a big Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, well, it's the Federal Reserve that creates all the inflation that destroys the value of our savings and our wages. It's the Federal Reserve that inflated the housing bubble and the stock market bubble before it. Every bubble. Oh, yeah. What's this? Can you speak? You're in this movie, right? In this movie? I don't know. I, I don't know if I'm in that movie. Yeah, Plunger, you're in this movie. I am? Danny Schechter's film. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know if I'm in it. I, 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 I get in a lot of documentaries, so I could be in there. What do you think of all the world we have to find? Well, I, such a good job, I think, why is America going down? It, it is going down. It's well, going down. I thought you were one presenter to doing such a good no. job. No. Well, some of the one percenters who are working on Wall Street, who are getting their money based on government bailouts and subsidies, that is the problem. They should be allowed to go broke. 
but there are a lot of people who are businessmen who don't get a government subsidy, who are, who are trying to overcome enormous government regulatory hurdles and high taxes. You know, they deserve that money. But I'm with you on Wall Street. Nobody deserves a bailout. No company is too big to fail. If, if someone on Wall Street gets in trouble, they should lose their money. That's how capitalism works. You, you, you take the good and the bad. Why are there 16 million people out of work? Well, the, one, the main reason is because the government, through the Federal Reserve, is bleeding Main Street dry to siphon money to the speculative activities going on here on Wall Street. Why a lot. 1% get it? income going up? Going up dramatically over yeah. the last yeah. 20 years. For the reasons. The average income of the average guy going down dramatically. Yeah, it's going down because of big government. The government is undermining the productivity of our country. Look, you're not gonna you're not gonna bring the poor up by bringing the rich down, right? You don't make the poor richer by making the rich poorer. You need rich people to invest their money to grow the economy, to create the products, to create the businesses, to create the jobs. If you take away the money, you get less. It's we not need nobility. Lords and ladies no. To take care of us. Lords and ladies, that's from government. Right? That I'm talking about people earning their own money from their own hard work. You you identify as a one percenter? Excuse me? You identify as a one percent? Well, I'm in the one percent for the purpose of this protest. I understand. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. we cannot have acts of violence or violations. Of I think it was the win. I think it was Please. the win. Okay, if you feel if you feel like yeah. that you're being questioned, I just wanted to invite you to, if you want to have a dialogue with us forming a spokes, a spokes council or some body that we're forming, we're trying to form more official bodies. I mean, you can come here and talk to people if you want. You know, you're free to do that autonomously. But if you'd like to meet with, we were doing it a little more structured earlier, and if you'd like to meet with us. Well, I mean, I'm right here. If anybody wants to come and ask me a question. Great. You know, Thank you very much. I'm Jesse. Sure. All right. Nice to meet you. I just want to shake huh? your hand because I've watched you a lot on, uh, what is this for? What is well, this, this is Reason TV. We're just, reason there, and they're going to put it online and try to make something out of it. But Okay, okay huh? he's next. He's next right here. He wants this guy to wants up next. Do you respect the fact, sir, you, 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 you addressed yourself as the 1% that all the people around you are demonstrating here against that concept? I understand that. Do That's you, why I'm here. Do you respect us sure. for sitting here you, and having here. a civilized conversation? Of course. I, I understand your, your concerns. Does I'm it, with you. Does it I agree that you should be upset, does but it, you're upset at the wrong people. But do you show, does it show you that maybe we have some quality to be respected? I am respecting you. If okay. I wasn't respecting you, I wouldn't be here. Right. You think we're against the wrong people when we're against the same I big government? Well, the, 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 the rep on the Occupy Wall Street movement is that it's an anti-capitalist movement. And my point is that we don't have capitalism. We have crony capitalism, and I'm against that. I'm with you on that. I want to get the government and the banks, I want to get them out of our lives. But a lot of people, I look at some of the grievances. Please respect your community. We have formed a line autonomously. Not for me to talk to you, I formed right, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me get this. Hold on to this. I think that you'd appreciate this. All right, what's your name? My name is Sage. Oh, yeah, Sage, okay, go ahead. So in order to talk to you, I formed an autonomous line. Okay, so where's the... Where's so I served my community in order to get something for myself. Well, did you? Did they pay to be on the line? No, what I wanted for myself was to talk to you. All right, well, well go ahead. So what I wanted to say was, what did you want to accomplish to, from, from coming to Occupy Wall Street? Well, I wanted to come down here because I see a protest movement, and I agree with the sentiment, and I agree with the fact that you should be protesting. It's just my point is it's Washington that should be uh, the recipient of the protest. You guys should be marching on the White House and the Federal Reserve demanding your freedom back. Demanding capitalism, demanding liberty, fighting for the constitutional rights that you should have by birth. Not not protesting the, the this is the consequence that the I don't down go on here. The marches. Huh? I don't go on the marches. Yeah. I, excuse me. Excuse me. Hi. Hi, my friend. Hi, how are you doing? I'm talking to you back. So anyway, um, I've come here, I don't go to the protests. I prefer to occupy the future instead of protesting the past. I've I've been here since like day one, not to brag. But I've noticed that there's sort of a difference between the people that come here to occupy and the people that come here to protest. I find that the media really likes paying attention to the protest, but doesn't really like paying attention to the occupation. I didn't know there was a difference. Well, maybe you spend more time here. Well, that's my first day. <laughs> I just wanted to say that a lot. Of, that I heard you say something about money, that people pursue money. I think that when people focus on one aspect of the process, like the money aspect, 
that things start to get demented. Well, they pursue money because they want the things that they, money can buy. But money is a, is a yardstick to you show. Think? Well, if you're if you're doing a business, if you're pursuing a business, wait, wait, wait. and you're not making money, uh -huh. that means you're not creating value. The market is telling you to stop. But if you can if you can organize labor, land, and capital and make a profit. The profit tells you you're benefiting society. You're, you're, you're dude, providing, I understand a, you're, you're making very economic educated. use of resources. I, I understand that you're very educated about economics, but the thing is, is that you were saying that people pursue money because they like what they can buy with the money. What about like the kind of people that, and, and the only aspect of the person of that uh, I know is, is that people that like collect a lot of money and then they like store it under their bed and then they but die. But no one does that. Money that's saved die. isn't stored. The only way you can make your money grow, do that. but the, if you want to grow your money, you have to make it available. You have to invest it. You have to either invest You're it yourself. You're jumping into what you're comfortable in, no. which is your economic education. But that's but what I'm, people I'm do. I'm it back down people, to a normal level. What about the kind, of, the kind of people, organizations of people that acquire resources but for some mentally sick reason, never figure out how to spread those resources well, around. And they don't get that many. The only way to get really rich, right, is to share your wealth by investing it. Look, Steve Jobs just passed away. He made billions. How many people here have iPhones in their pockets? I feel you like you, what, you, yeah. what he, you want is... He's not a humanitarian. He's a businessman. My but dude, he enriched the lives of millions of people pursuing his own self -interest. I am not a ramp so that you can do an ollie in front of your camera. I actually want to have a conversation. But anyway, but I have a lot more people to talk to. So if Sure you enough. A, Let's see who's next online. All right. Well, thank you very who's much. Me, what, what, what I want to say one thing. I just have a, well, it has nothing to do with, like, I just want to, you seem like I've been in a search for someone, and it goes deeper than a lot of things that I can say in front of a crowd, but I believe that I was put here today because I've been a part of the occupation on and off because I am so young, and it's not really, I, I'm not really able to be out of my, out of certain areas, like, I'm young, I have a curfew, I, I have parents, you understand? So it's like, I was out, I came out here today for the first time in a, in a couple days, and I believe that you were put here. I believe that you were put here, among other reasons, for me to speak to. So if, if it was possible for me to have a conversation well, with you, a, a real conversation, a real well, conversation outside of the cameras, outside of the, outside of the microphones, of I'd like to have a conversation. There's no. a lot of people here. No, that's, the only that's problem, so. I'll wait. I'll wait as long as it takes. I want to be the. I want to be the. I want to be the last person you talk to. I want right, to. I have a question. Okay. Point, okay. All right, I All guess right. in terms well, of a question. Okay, yeah. No problem. How do you advise people who, like you say, who would like to start a business or create something, create an evolution, a revolution, who need money but are not after it at the money? They, the money is not the end, but it is a means to an end. Of course, you if you're going to start a business, if you don't make money, how are you going to employ people? How are you going to pay your rent? How are you going to buy your materials? What I want is I want people like you to be able to start a business. The problem is it's very hard. You know, it's easier today for a young man to start a business in communist China than it is in America because the government actually leaves you alone more there. There's not as much regulation. There's not as much red tape. There's not as much taxes. And when my grandparents came to this country, they didn't even speak the language. My grandfather started a small carpentry business. There were no rules, regulations, no red tape. If he hired somebody, it was just, he hired him. He just paid him cash at the end of the day. If there was any money left over, he was happy. It was easy. You can succeed in America when my grandparents came here because we're, they didn't have all these roadblocks. I want to eliminate the roadblocks so you can have the same opportunities that he had. I understand what I'm, I understand what you're saying. I do have ways to make money. I, I'm a musician. My brother's a musician. That is our thing. We preach our word through our music because, like you can see here, there's senseless drumming going on there, but it draws crowds. You understand? Music is a strong vehicle to put a point across. Like if everyone. My point is that you'd be able to pursue that craft easier and make more money doing it if the government was out of the way not only out I'm, of your way but out of the ways of the people not, that you want to play it's music it's not for. about it's not about making you money you might want to play music in a venue and the venue can't allow it because there's too many government rules and regulations and they can't take the risk and they won't hire you understood, understood. No, what I'm it's not saying, trusting me sorry, it's sorry, trusting you I understand what I'm saying is what about the person who needs money now you you're talking about yeah, investing well, well, what do I basically I'm looking for advice to well to, if, if you want if you have a business plan and you need money you got to find someone like me and convince them to back you 
And the thing is, though, back him, though. That's well, the question. well, that's I don't exactly even know what, what his I'm, plan is. That's well, why I wanted to speak to you. Is, you keep, okay, but you keep saying, but you, you said, you said that the reason why he's having a problem is because the government is getting in, in, the government is getting in his way. What is the government doing to stop him from well, starting a business? What, as far right. as regulations are concerned, well, what because regulations are the government stop from there's him, a, a a small business right. from the beginning. There are far fewer people that have savings and capital to invest because the government taxed it all away. So there's not as many people like me for you to talk to. But of course, if we're going to start a business and I'm going to fund it, what I have to look at is, okay, what are all the rules and taxes and regulations that we're going to have to overcome to start that business? Right, so you're talking about and yourself. It, you're not talking about no, but it adds to the risk of the yourself. venture. Okay, it, so it adds to my risk. To get a loan from you. You're not giving him a loan because you're saying that the government is stopping you from giving him a loan. No, I'm saying that the government is making it inherently riskier because it's going to be harder for his business to succeed and pay me back because of all the regulations and taxes. And, so you're and I'm saying, to give him but you know, because can I say one thing? What I'm saying is you just proved my point because I came to you and I asked you to have a conversation. I asked you to review my business plan. I asked you to aid me in starting a business and you wanted to treat me like someone no, who- I'm not treating you like it, but no, my, my, my point is- Not look, to insult right, you, sir. But if, you know, if, we take, if we start raising taxes on this so-called 1%, all we do is diminish the ability of people like you to get a loan. Because not, somebody has to save the money. I'm not talking about. I'm not talking about a loan. I'm not talking. What I'm talking about is, I wanted you to fund my business. I presented yeah, but, you. Yeah, I, we just met in the park. I know you for all of ten minutes. How am I going to fund your business? That's so what I'm saying. Is time. that's why I asked you. That's why I came to you, and I didn't ask you to ask you. I didn't come here with a question. You you asked me to ask you a question. I didn't come here with a question. I didn't come here with any of that. I came well, here to get maybe an email address. Why don't you to get, get maybe a website? I'm I'm I'm, I'm ship at Europac why don't you come up with a business proposal and send it to me? I'm sorry, what was that shift? Shift at, at Europac.net. Please spell that for me. S-C-H-I-F-F. I'm all over the internet. You can find me. But not, you, I, I don't you, know if I'm going to be able to find an email well, you, address. They might not be. Yeah, it's there. Trust happened? me. Trust Let me. me. Just clarify but, one thing. Yeah. So it's, what, what is your full name? Well, Peter Schiff. Peter but, Schiff? Yeah. And it's Schiff at? Europac.net. Europac. E U R O P A C dot net. P A C dot net. Yeah, okay. I gave you a card, but I don't think I have it. My one. name is, no, is Reggie Elias. All right, well, it's good luck. You right, you're a nice young man. I, I just want to clarify one thing before I let this guy speak. The 99% meme. The what? The 99% to 1% meme was just one meme out of many memes. What's a meme? I'm, I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, a popular turn of phrase. Okay. So the, 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 the catchphrase 99%. This is not 99% Park, it's Liberty Plaza. And the 99% catchphrase is not definitive of everyone here. It makes sense why a popularity meme would be popular. It's popularity itself. The phrase itself right. is might as well be popularity. Right. But, anyway. but just so you know, as you come in here at the 1%, not everyone here. I understand you have to make money, but there's gotta be regulations because I believe in democracy but I also believe in regulations. Right. The market has to grow at a sensible rate, right? It cannot grow too fast. Well, if the market grows too fast, it will crash. See, the regulation we want is the market. That's yeah. the regulation that works. When governments try to regulate, it screws it all up. Now let's take a corporation. If a corporation wants to sell a product, it can't sell the product for whatever price it wants. Somebody has to voluntarily buy that product. So the market determines the price of the goods that are being sold. The same thing is with labor. A corporation just can't take advantage of its workers and pay them as little as it wants because businesses compete with one another to buy labor. People are selling their labor, and so the market is going to set wages. The market is going to set prices. If the government comes in and tries to say, this is the wage that needs to be paid, all they do is end up creating lots of unemployment. They have classes of people that aren't allowed to work. No, that's a matter of fact. Well, huh? did, a did a government end slavery or did the United States government end slavery? Did it, I mean, I'm sorry, did a corporation end slavery or did the government do it? Did corporations what does slavery have to do with what we're talking about? We're, we're saying we're saying what there there is a role for government in our society, and, and corporations yeah, well, look, cannot do. Everything. But slavery was wrong to begin okay, with, so let's no, not even. No, it was government that created, but but government created. Wait, hold on. But government government created slavery. Okay, so so you're saying that your your argument is is that corporations know better than the United States government or any government. Well, first of all, corporations. So, so wait. Corp let me finish. Let me finish. 
cash. So what you're saying is we should disband the federal government, go back to a system before the federal government existed where states had the rights to choose whatever laws they wanted, whatever they wanted, and then how do, how do corporations well, remember, play a role in I'm, that? Remember, I'm, I'm, I'm... Walmart? Well, can, can, does Walmart make policy well, hold on. All of us, first of all, and then our senators just go First home? of all, I'm saying... Okay, first of all, I'm saying go back to the Constitution. I'm not saying go back to prior to the... Constitution was written 200 years so, but ago, it, and but, it's imperfect. That's why well, there has been amendments they, they to it. Well, it was imperfect. Well, so they're called amendments yeah, but, to correct things that weren't... Yeah, but that even... Don't, Represent but what's going on now. notwithstanding the amendments, the government is out operating outside the principles of the Constitution. I want limited government, but you're you're, you're what, saying limited to how much? How much? Where does what, government have a role in the, in the, in they, the lives of the, 300 million people? Government is there to protect property, life, liberty, and that's, and that's it. it. And yes, that's it. it's not and there to it. redistribute wealth. It's not there uh, it, when you have government do that. It doesn't work. They're History is filled. Well, well, that's work. because that's because of government. The market. So, I, I'm so against the bailout. The, gov the government shouldn't the government have done that. Really that was that unconstitutional. Market, right? Yes, the, the government. The perfect. You know that, no, the market you? would work well if the, the government stayed out. Do you believe, do you you believe that. that? Do you believe that old world governments should just shut down? No, of course and not. Way to but, a free market. Of course not. But let me, you mentioned Walmart. So what are you afraid that Walmart's going to do to you? What, what am I afraid yeah, they're going to do Wal to me? What is Walmart doing? You should doing go that? and ask the employees that are working in sweatshop type conditions so wait, wait, that don't get enough hours, employees. that don't have health care. How wait, is wait it? Okay. Then wh why don't they quit? I mean, Walmart doesn't hold a gun quit? to their head. If oh, if they can get a better job. So why did the rape victim get no, raped? No, no. What was she doing out no. late at night? They're not. You know what I mean? like, all right. So are, are you offering what people better? Are you offering people better jobs in Walmart? If you think people in Walmart aren't getting a good deal, why don't you offer to hire them from So 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 if the people at Walmart if 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 corporate if the if the if the board of directors at Walmart don't see fit to if they if they want to hire 40,000 people and keep most of them on as part-time employees just for the simple fact, excuse me, let me finish. That they don't want so they don't want them to work more than 40 hours so they don't have to bring them into their health care system so then they don't have to pay for their health care but that is that right but the government to do that the government wait, wait wait if Walmart's not going to change it and Walmart's going to keep up in any corporation not just Walmart any corporation that doesn't give and protect its employees that pays them a livable wage if it's not government's purpose to do that then who is going to step in and fill the void to make sure that 300 million people are represented right. Remember, properly? Who does it, that? It's the government that is imposing these re regulations that is causing Walmart to try to get around. If the government no. isn't there to no. do it, okay. who is supposed to do if that? You go back, if you go back to, let's say, Henry Ford and Ford Motors Company, a hundred years ago, before there were labor unions, before there was a minimum wage, yeah. before the yeah. average Ford worker yeah. was making twice what the yeah. Ford workers are making yeah. today. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and, 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 and you know what? There was a lot of other imperfections no. in the system. Do you want to go back to 1920, 1930? What is this golden year that I don't wanna, Republicans want to go back yeah, to? I don't want, well, what year? The 60s? The 70s? What I don't, year? I don't want to go back to that technology, but I want to go Not back to that level of freedom. The, I want the level of freedom. There was more for freedom who? for some everybody. Women couldn't vote at some Ooh, point. Uh, African Americans and, uh, and others had to ride look, in the back I'm of the bus. You, you want to go back there? Look, we don't want to go back. I'm telling there. you, there's more. There's more economic oh, there was, freedom. there was more economic freedom. Yes, but a what lot more. Social freedom and social justice. Well, what do, what do you consider, you consider social justice? Why reparation payment right now? There's no. There's <laughs> reparation. I want to know. What? The what? German, the Japanese get reparations. Hey, my, in my what, right reparation? I, my, my grandparents weren't even in this country until like 1900. Sir? How am I going to get? He's going to get reparations from me. So, so, so you want to? So, uh, guys, 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 guys. What, what, just, what you wanna, need uh, is freedom and opportunity. That's that, that's, that's, your, that's your reparation. Do you shop at Walmart? You don't want to. No, I don't shop at Walmart. Where do you buy your clothes? You want to talk? I don't. I don't buy them at Walmart. Where do you buy them? I buy them at places that aren't perfect. And but I let buy me ask it, you a question. But, but here's the thing: it doesn't. But you can't. You, shop, you can't just say. But you here's can't just my say, question. Listen, if you ever bought something from Walmart, no. then your argument well, just me, goes out the window. Question. If that's what you're no, trying to do. No, but when you go shopping, you know what I mean? Do you try to buy clothes that are less expensive, or do you try to pay more for your clothes? I mean, do you look around I own for a bargain? Just bought it. Yeah, I mean, but it, if, there, if there were two, if there were two shirts, the same shirt, one was twenty dollars and one was fifty, which one would you buy? Come on, what Look, kind of a me. question is Which that? Which one would you buy? What kind of a question is it? Just give me an answer. 
Whichever one I prefer. No, Whichever they're identical. They're the same exactly shirt. Exactly identical. Yeah. I'll buy the one. I'll buy the one for twenty bucks. Okay. I'll buy the one. But for what if bucks. the guy that made the one for twenty bucks was paying his workers less? Oh, what if the so guy now, that was charging fifty dollars was now, paying more now money? Now it comes in. Now, no, but now, now all of the butts and ifs no, but and now, else but my point in. is, are you going to pay more money to the guy that pays higher wages? If it meant that, if it meant that there was, if it meant that, if it meant that at least thirty percent of the iPhone was manufactured here by American workers, I would pay more for it. So you would I would pay more for how it. Much, so how is it possible well, that that Apple has more money on the books than the United States federal government? It's you easy. Know how it's, oh, no, 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 let me finish. You know how it's possible? It's a rhetorical yeah. question. Because Republicans and the business class that are in our politics saw fit yeah. to give tax breaks to all corporations and the wealthiest people so that they can starve the federal government of its taxation. Well, I'm, and I'm, now well, you have a system, you have a, we have a system where there's corporations yeah. that have more money than the United States federal well, government. Well, that's not, not even close. That sounds <laughs> preposterous, well, they, but it's true. <laughs> well, so they, now they, let me ask you a question. Is it okay? There's there, there's been yeah. memorials for Steve Jobs all over the place at every Apple store. Every every there's yeah. there's reporters that are all around the world that never asked one single question to Steve Jobs when he was alive. Why are you manufacturing your iPhone yes. in China and you don't have any and of your manufacturing here be, in the United States? And I'll tell States? you why. Because we Do you made think it, that's be, fair to the American people? Be, wait, the American people don't own those jobs. No, Steve no, no, Jobs has a no, right to manufacture where he wants. Like he does have a right to and, do it. And the problem is we have made it too expensive for him to manufacture oh, here. Oh, we did. With our, we, the did government. the American workers the, want too much? No, because the we government want too much, put too much health Oh, it's the government's again, fault. Remember, the reason that can, that, that employee, employers right yeah, yeah. want to lower wages yeah, yeah, yeah. is because their customers want low prices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody wants yeah. low prices. Okay. You're yeah. all and so if we they if want low prices, we you got everybody in this park wants low prices. You can't have low prices. No, if, no we don't. No, we don't. Yes, you do. We're not here. Not a, no, if, we're if, not if here asking. So, we don't want so you want to you want to pay wait more? A second, just a check. Is anybody out here protesting? To get lower prices. No, no, I'm saying you want higher okay. prices. So, so you, you're in favor of, let's say, the cost of gasoline triple, the cost of food triple. It's not going the to cost triple. Of, if, we don't manufacture gasoline here. But we if we manufacture goods here. But given given the cost that the government has built in, if these things were made here, they would cost a hell of a lot more money okay, than they so cost now. So let's the Americans out of work, right? So, no. so that's your justification if for you putting the Americans out of work? So They're not. They're not going to be here. The, all but, the regulations but that, are. But does that, there'd be, you so cannot. The prices are going to go up. But there'd be no the customer. There'd be no customer. Nobody would buy the stuff. It was too expensive. What do you do? What do you do? I'm in the investment business. Water. Okay. Food, shelter, and education, not for profit. What about it? Water, food, shelter, and education should well, we, not be for profit. Well, do you believe that? If, if, well, that, that means you being, you think education should be very expensive because everything that's not done not for profit, profit costs more. No, the profit is what not keeps with it the cheap. Current structure. Yes. Why do you think education the is so expensive? The structure doesn't work. Because why the is government education? is involved. Why is education because so expensive? the government is involved. Oh, it's the why government, is the government is subsidizing. Why is everything the government's for? Profits. In your eyes? Profits keep thing. prices Can down. Can you name one good thing that the government does for you aside from military spending or military or, or military intervention? Pretty much no. I can't. So, the, so, so, so you're a person <laughs> the that federal believes, government. Do you believe that the federal government has a right to to exist and to govern the lives of it American people? It has the right people? to exist, but not in the form it exists today. It's it's operating outside. Do you the believe the EPA should be disbanded? I think it does a lot more harm than good. Do you believe the FDA yes. should be disbanded? Yeah, I'd like to get rid of it. What about the FDA? Uh huh. The board, of of the board of Education. I think we should. What, we about, get, I what want, about the Board of Education? I want to get rid of the okay. entire federal Department of Education. Yes, then, it is then, wasting right, our money, then, then, and it is running up the cost sir, of education. Sir, what, what I've learned. No, no, no. Let me finish. What I've learned over the years is to never argue with a fool, and you, my friend, are a fool. Okay, so I'm Thank foolish, you. right? You're so foolish. I just stumbled into you stumbled all into my wealth. It. I run all how, these businesses. How could you, how could you say? How could you disband the EPA and the oh, FDA yeah, and the I Board of Education? It. Because like, well, you're a fool. it's not the Board you're of an Education. Idiot. You're talking about the Department of Education. Wait, no, 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 did I call you an idiot? Did I call you an idiot? No, you didn't. All right, so I have a little bit more respect. I'm the next president of the United States. Stand down, sir. I'm the next president. Kazoo Cruiser for president. Listen, it may be joke now, but when the earthquakes take out Washington, what are y'all gonna do? Board of Education. 
question is not the federal it's government. It's not the Board of Education's <laughs> problem to fix the planet. It's mine. We're going to build boats as the next yeah. administrator of the free yeah. world. Right. We're here? going to build boats. Now you need to listen Excuse to me. me. What is the point down here? My point is What's to talk point? to people who are protesting capitalism and Wall Street and letting them know that they should be protesting government and Washington. That is what's ruining this country. The equals the Wall Street. Well, you're fired. Yes, that's the today. You're fired. Yes. yes, that's you're the fired. problem. So but, but you got to go after Washington. That's the source of you're it. You're fired. You can't, you can't blame fired. the companies who took the you're bailouts. Fired. Blame the government that you're bailed fired. them out. In you're many fired. ways, it is, and you're right. That's a problem. He's but we got to take the power fired. away from government. As long as government can dole out power, people will take it. If you're taking the power away from government, who are you trying to give it to? If you're trying to destroy all of us, not a manifestation no. Of the people's power. If you take government out of it, you don't have to worry about a corporation. All they can do is get you to voluntarily give them your money for their products. You don't have to feel. You don't have to fear a business. You fear government. Government has power over you. Businesses don't. All businesses can do is offer you services and products. What would you replace if the Department of Education was gone? What would you replace that with? What is there? We did. We did. We had plenty of education in this country before the federal government got involved. What's your opinion about entrepreneurship? Well, we need more of it. I'm an entrepreneur. We need more entrepreneurs. But the government is in the way of entrepreneurs. Who the fuck is he? Who are you? I don't, don't curse though. We're just gonna. <laughs> I have to edit question. it out. I've got a right Who to am speech. I? I'm an individual. All right, Peter you're walking around like a big kid with a microphone. Nobody needs to listen right. to you. No, well, then you don't have to listen to me. You don't have to right. listen to me. You, you, right. to you, you need to go back to Wall Street. You need to go back to Wall Street. But no. you don't have you're to stand by You're dressed just like those pigs. Well, I'm dressed like some of them. Polyester! You're a problem. I like you're a polyester so what do you pig. Want? You don't want anybody to work? No, I don't want you wearing polyester. Well, I don't know what. I'm not wearing polyester. That's that's exactly what that is. Don't touch him. Don't touch him. That's what I'm, I'm making, making a point. Go okay. Team. You don't have to. Who else? Maybe we should think about why all of my fellow veterans are coming back to no jobs, no future. Well, you can. 30% of the homeless thank, people in America thank are Thank the better. federal government, no, the Federal Reserve, for that. Well, we should thank. Uh, not just the Federal Reserve, but the one percent that's got all the money for that. No, but, but how do you Why think all the veterans are coming back? They're not no. getting treated. No, most people... on the street. Thirty percent of the homeless people in America are veterans. So when everybody says let we support the troops, that's a lie. You support the troops when they're out there getting killed or shot, but when they come home and they're homeless and they got no jobs, you don't support the troops. Well, I didn't even. And that's why. I'm I, well, here. I didn't even support a lot of these wars well, that put I'm those troops over there in the we, first place. Let me but, shake your hand. We're in but, agreement. All right. There. But the, but the reason, look, the people in this country, most of them who earn their money, not a lot of the guys on Wall Street who got the bailouts, I'm with you on that, but most people around the country who earn their money deserve it, and they earned it by creating jobs and creating businesses and providing products and services here. No, here in this country, too. No, all here, too. Where do you think, where do you think any of the jobs are coming from? Some of those people are out here. You don't well, think some of those people are out here or at other occupations around the country? Well, there are people out here. A lot of those people have probably... lost their businesses. They've lost their homes. Yes. You know. Yeah, because I of mean, the government. Saying, because of big in government. This boat. I, we're all in the same boat together. Right. And what we got to do we gotta is we got to dismantle this big federal government that is destroying the economy. Right. Then we can all swim together. We can all, you know, capitalism will lift all boats. We need a revolution. Is what we need. Yeah, that's what we're doing. We need an that's American right revolution. Hey, I'm with you. Hey, we're I, working hey, on that. We're, we're, I ran we're in for Senate last year. I, I, things, didn't, you know? I didn't win, though, but I tried. But remember, Matt, my fellow veterans, they need to be taken care of. You don't want to take away the... Uh, the only reason you want to take money away from the federal government is to steal the rest of the money that you didn't steal already. No, the federal government is the one that's stealing money from the people who earned it. I want to leave the money with the people who earned it, and they can use it to grow the economy, to create no, the jobs. You want to take out whatever left that you didn't that the one percent no. didn't already no what, what did i do? what money did i have that i take how did i'm I'm i take money you personally well, i'm talking about the one well, what, what, what do you do for a living i work for the state huh all right well i mean I, I i work for myself i have a company but i've made money because i have twenty thousand customers who gave me their money voluntarily i didn't force anybody to give me money like wall street the corporations that are running our economy well, that's the problem. They shouldn't and be. They're able running to our it. government. But why are they? Because the and government it's has the capitalism. Power. It's not capitalism. Yes, exactly. Well, you got it. We got it because government gave it to them. We got to no. take it back they by take.
we got to take the power away from government so they can't give it out to their friends in banks or corporations. We want the corporations who, to get money who earn it without any political connections, without any special subsidies. We want them to earn the money because they produce the products and the services that we want at the prices that we want to pay. And in the process, they create jobs. They're the ones bankrolling the campaigns. That's what the you're, you're saying you're against the federal government, you wanted to change and all that, but you guys are the ones, or at least these guys here on Wall Street are the ones that are funding all the campaigns and putting these people in power in the first place. Right, but And then you do so because you know that they will enact policies that you want. And then you also know that once they do that, and you become friends with them through campaign fundraising and all that. That is the that problem. You, that they will let you in the government and you'll be like, hey, can I, can I be Secretary of the Treasury? No, that is the problem. See, be, because Washington has so much power, there's lobbyists because people are peddling their influence and corporations are trying to get doesn't the benefit sense. of that power. But that we, make sense, as though, long as the government is there with power, people are going to lobby to have it used in their the interest. The government is there to begin with and it's supposed to have power to take care of the, the affairs of the country. No, it's but, not. But what's not supposed to happen is that a small group of citizens with a certain amount of money are able to walk right into the government and then sit and, and, and then sit the government is here in the White House and sit, sit in all these positions. Yeah. The federal government is here to be small and inconsequential. It's supposed to defend us from abroad, it but it's supposed to. Smaller, you get it even easier. No, no. There, if they had no power, there'd be no lobbying. They'd have be there'd be nothing to give out. We don't want the government to be able to pick winners and losers to say you get a bailout and you don't. You get you pay a tax and you get a subsidy. That is the problem. The actually, make those decisions are the guys here once they get in government because yeah. they put themselves in the government with the money that they right. Have. They I, buy those seats. The secretary. Yeah. Of the Treasury. I, mean, I want to. St yeah, we got to protest that process. But it begins. No, but it begins in Washington. No, that's the right source. Well, no, actually, you got to cut off the head of the snake. Stop buying uh, seats in the government and stop enacting these policies. Stop deregulating everything so that you can do whatever you want. But is no, as long no, but as long as government can give out special favors, people are going to lobby to get them. You got yes, these guys basically kick the door down and like, yo, we 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 funded your campaign. You better you better let us in there, or else we're not going to fund your campaign next time around. And it's already right. happening. Because the guys here are angry at Obama for like trying to regulate them a little bit, so now they're giving all their money no, no, to Mitt Romney. No. There's already too much regulation. Are you kidding me? In the financial industry, we're regulated to death. You know, because the if the regulations, if the regulations that were rolled back in the '90s were still in place, we wouldn't have had this crisis. We wouldn't. We wouldn't no, we, we, we the government caused the crisis with all the regulations. Look, I started my business, my brokerage business, in 1996. Right? I'll get to that. I started my firm in 96. There is no way with all the regulations that exist today I could have started. You know, it took me almost three years to get permission from regulators to hire people. I was on a hiring freeze. It cost me million dollars or more in, in legal bills the to get the, re about, the regulations we're talking about are the ones that allow these banks to get so huge. You, yeah, that, that was allow, government. And that allow them government to, did to that. Create all these instruments, these financial instruments that yes. are actually Highly dangerous. Yes, and that caused the I agree. The, the, the Federal Reserve did that, the, and the, 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 the government did that. The politicians that are sitting around being like, "Oh, you know what? Let's uh, let let's de -re let's yeah. regulate too much, just so that th these guys can crash the economy." It's because it's because, yeah, because, it's, because it's the guys here yeah, that are fundraising. Know, I mean, do you know that I was? The ear of the yeah, do you know, know that for years I was on television and writing books, warning about all the things that have just happened. I warned about the housing bubble. I warned well, that it was going to crash. No, well, I can't. I could. I tried. I, no one, no, no, those people don't listen to me in Washington, well, but I warned. Well, well, and now that's what we're doing. We're but, them to stop. but I understood how the government created the problem. Sir, You're talking about Glass-Steagall. The reason that we had Glass-Steagall was to counteract the damage of government-insured bank accounts. The problem is the government shouldn't be insuring the bank FDIC accounts. Was created at the same time as yes, I know. But, insured bank accounts. but we shouldn't so insure we, bank accounts, and that, I know because we don't. We shouldn't be insuring bank accounts. Why shouldn't we insure bank accounds? Because. Do you have a bank? Because of bank runs. No, wait. Do you have a bank account? Yes, I have a bank account. Do you do you care what the bank does with your money when you deposit it there? Do you care about the loans? I do. Why? Do you worry? Because I don't want them to gamble with it. And all these and all these security. No. No, but it. All these securitizations. No. Created out of out of the of the government. If the if the bank gambles with their money and loses, does it affect your deposit? Of course it does. How? It's insured by the government. If you take out the legal, they use that. Nobody. Nobody in this area that has a bank account has ever looked at the bank's portfolio to see what kind of loans they're making. Nobody cares. 
No. Does that make it okay? No, no. You. So. Are you personally benefiting from the Bush tax cuts? That's what I want to know. You're part of the one percent. Because I don't think anyone else here is benefiting. I don't benefit from tax cuts. The government benefits from the money that I earn that they tax. That's my money. I earned it. I'm probably doing. But I earned it. The government has no right to it. I'm like this young man. I care what they're doing. They have the right to tax for the general welfare and defense of this country. They don't have the right to take money from me and give it to somebody else. That's it. We're a country, not individuals. But we're a collection of individuals, and individual rights are supreme. Unfortunately, to protect our rights, not to steal from us. If if it's for the wrong purposes, if the government, I didn't sign a contract with. I've got I've got inalienable rights. No. Well, what, wouldn't you like to get into the one percent? No, you, know, you know you don't want more money. You don't want. If I offered to put you in the one percent right now, you'd turn whether, it down. And I would pay my share and get rid of the okay, tax on. cuts immediately. What do you? Okay, let me ask you a question. Hold on, hold on. Buffett and his no. secretary. What? I would let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. So that these folks hold could on. pay their student loans, could get off of food stamps, could be successful, just wait, like you. Wait, what are you hold driving? On. Hold on. They don't have a car. What do you think my fair is? Shares. What percent of my income do you think get would be fair? Get rid of the Bush tax. No, no, no. Don't just give me a percentage. No. What percent? Marginal. So you think it? Hold on. What, the CPA, what do you ask think? The tax what do you think would be ask fair? Ask the tax guy. Be, what's fair, fair for his rate. clients? Like what do you think is fair? Rate. National average runs close to 17 percent. A whole bunch of people, about 50 okay, percent, don't pay any taxes. How much do you think I should pay? What would be fair for me? I, I don't know what your sure. income is. I sure. can't tell you that. Well, what do you, I believe in a progressive income what, tax. What, what, that is fair. Okay. Well, I love. All right. I'm paying over. All right. Well, that would be. Tax cut for me. I pay much more than 35% of my total what income in tax. What do you think of the Less Buffett than me, plan? and I employed her. Well, and, and well Buffett is true. full of it because Warren Buffett is the biggest shareholder in Berkshire Hathaway, so he's paying a 35% tax on his paper, profits. Sure, it affects him. He has to pay it. No, no, no. no. Not, well, I thought it's on paper. But I'm paying. I am, I am giving the government half of what I earn. You think they should take more? I think we should get rid of the Bush tax cuts. But that means I would be paying more than half of what but I earned the government. There's no way you could cut all the expenses you want without and increasing revenue. There's no way to fix this problem. If you raise there's my no taxes, way. maybe I'll just decide to sell my business and fire 150 people. Well, Why got, should I work for free? If you've got 20,000 clients, you're doing much better than anyone no, but, else here. But why should I? But do you think, wait, you hold on. want to share your success. No. Do you think I should work for you or for myself? Well, I'm like you. I'm an entrepreneur. I want you to work for yourself. Right, but if the but government. I want you to, but you started out with two clients before you had twenty thousand. You should want to help the next guy. That's I am helping the next good. guy. Well, I'm helping them. I'm, I'm helping my clients by giving them services that they want. I'm employing 150 people. How many people do you employ? I'm in the mortgage business. I wish I employed 150 well, well, people. Well, stop. Well, go do it. The problem is that I'm doing it. I'm doing my share. Why aren't you doing yours? Unregulated. And in fact, I'm probably paying. I'm probably paying more income taxes than everybody around me combined. So I'm paying more than my fair share right now. So I'm picking up the slack for a lot of people. Who can verify that? GE didn't pay any taxes. Well, I'm again. Look, we need. First of all, we should get rid of the corporate income tax because corporations don't pay taxes. Either their workers pay taxes, their customers pay the tax, or their shareholders. And a lot of the shareholders are elderly people who are trying to re live off their retirement uh, savings. Or people, uh, taxes if no, uh, huh? tax people on the individual, the corporate level is a ruse. They're not paying the taxes. They're passing them on. Yeah, and you're talking about the poor, these poor students. Hey, I'm the one that wants to get rid of all these student loans. I don't, I don't want the government loaning money to kids to go to college. I don't want them guaranteeing. Nobody. I want tuitions to come down because. Zealand than for me to stay yeah. here and go to college. But you know what? If the government stopped subsidizing student loans, the universities would have to slash the prices, and then you can afford to go. You wouldn't need a loan. Okay. That's what Thank I want. you for the answer. I want quality yeah, education. I don't have a lot of education to argue on these matters, so I am here to educate myself. But my problem is that a lot of people here don't trust corporations. When we give them money back, they say we'll hire more people. Instead, what we have seen is that but, they take that money and use it to influence government to help themselves. Because government has the power to dole out. We got to take away the power. But corporations, hold on. Corporations are nothing to fear. All they can do is offer you a product or a service. It's up to you whether or not you want to buy it. 
They can offer you a job. You don't have to take it. You can work for somebody else. You can work for yourself. Well, you don't have to no fear a business. No job out there. Well, then aren't you glad the corporation is there to give you one because there's nothing better no, out there? The yeah. Yes. Why not? That makes sense. No. How are they taking away jobs? Where do you think jobs come from? When they crashed the economy, no, but they, it was crashed started, because everybody started doing jobs. Job cuts. All these jobs corporations are doing job cuts. Wait, Even Wall Street. They, here's my they, question: though. Where did jobs come where from in the first place? Money they buy. That's where jobs come. No, from. no, they don't come from consumers. Where did though? Where do the your company couldn't? No. Where do those consumers no, get the money? Where do the consumers get the money? They get the money from from, from working. working. Yeah. So the jobs come first. The goods come second. Yeah, but yeah. after that, while yeah, while you're taking while, all the jobs out and you're not reinvesting in America, right? But why, but why are we doing that? Because the labor's cheaper over there. No, because the regulations are higher over no, here. The no, taxes no, are no. higher. Let yes, yes, yes. One more question. Do you believe that Franklin Delano Roosevelt did what he had to do in 1939? Government I, intervention? No, he caused the Great Depression. <laughs> See, yes, by doing exactly what Herbert Hoover did. He was the Barack Obama of his day. He, the reason we had a Great Depression was Roosevelt. We didn't even, he didn't save it, he almost destroyed it. No, no, no. Hoover is, the socialists want to blame it. Hoover did the wrong thing. Hoover was like George Bush. He tried to prop everybody up, bail everybody out. We didn't, Hoover was not a capitalist. Okay, who are you? Peter Schiff. And what do you represent? The one percent. Okay, and what is it? Well, you, the people who everybody supposedly here wants to tax and regulate uh, in order to theoretically improve the economy. So are you with some TV station or what? No, I'm not with a TV station. <laughs> well, my, my question is, so, where, where does the one percent fit in the picture of the crisis that we, that we just went through? Well, so you say that it's all the fault of the government. What's their role? What, no, what my point is, look, guys? You're, by if you if taking money do, away they, oh, from the one percent to victims? suspend it is going to hurt the economy. We need no, capital need to grow the economy. We need investments. We need savings. We need production. Right. We need but we need what, more machines. We need more factories. What role did Wall Street play in this crisis? In your, in your no, they history. paid a big role. Wall Street drank the alcohol that the Federal Reserve poured. But if there was no Fed pouring the alcohol, if Fannie and Freddie weren't guaranteeing all these mortgages. Wall Street wouldn't have originated them. So it was Wall Street working with government. But the source of the problem was government. Government started. That's how come when I was warning about the crisis back in 2004 and 2005, begging the Fed to raise interest rates, trying to get Fannie and Freddie out of the mortgage guarantee business, nobody wanted to listen to me. No, it's corporate money that's in politics currently that is controlling the system. That's why you guys have the power you do. I don't you have any power. World War II was most probably. But I don't have any power. I'm, you know, I'm as powerless as you. Two was most. World War II was most probably what brought us out of that depression. And we came out shining because the rest of the world was actually. Up. But after that, the interest or the tax rates on the very wealthy were extremely high, and we had an amazing golden era of prosperity in this country. Let me tell you, you did not suffer. Plus, you employed many more people than the sector does currently. Well, okay, the financial here's, sector does nothing but manipulate money. Well, I agree. We need to shrink the financial sector. It gets too much government subsidies. But what ended the second the depression was the end of the Second World right. War, when right. the government stopped all that spending. It wasn't the war that got us out. It was ending the war. But yes, there were very high taxes after the war. But nobody paid them. There were so many loopholes. Nobody paid those high taxes. People like me are paying much higher taxes today than people were paying in 1945, 1950. In fact, nobody even paid withholding taxes. The average person didn't even pay income taxes until 1943. My That's when the withholding tax then, came in. My history states that the tax rates were 70, no, 80, 90. The rates were there, but nobody paid them. Nobody had that income because there were so many deductions, nobody had to pay them. You Now the average person is paying a much higher rate of tax, the average wealthy person. Let's say somebody who's making five, 10, 20 million dollars a year. If you made the equivalent of that in the 1950s, you paid a lower tax because you had so many deductions, you had no taxes. Now, well, I make money for my clients. I get money for my clients. Does it come from capital gains? No, it comes from ordinary. Some of it comes from capital gains, so but you're paying fifteen percent on capital gains. But most of my income is in my in business, and there I'm paying. 38% federal, 7% to the seven. Oh, yeah, well, that's. Well, I'm paying it on my total income. You're only paying it on your okay, marginal Peter, income. Peter, yeah. you, let's talk. What is the solution? These poor children are in, this, in the cold. If you have children in, in this position, would you like to see your children in this condition? The solution, Look at the wind blowing. The solution is freedom, capitalism, liberty, you know, the Constitution. 
That's what we need. Free people can succeed, they can prosper. If the government just gets out of the way and lets it happen. You would not have come here and done this today unless you were a go-getter. And I guarantee you would have been go-getting with a higher tax rate on you, just as you are now. No. You would have made your dad proud. You would have shown how tough no. you are. You would have been the big guy on no. the block oh, right now. And we would have helped you do it. But we would also have uh, taken some of the money from you and sh spread it around, unlike but, what's going on. Here's the problem. The money that you take from me is the money I would use to grow the economy. Any money that's taken from me and said, but no, that's not what you're doing. You're gambling. No, no, no. You're gambling. Wall Street. No, no, no. This is not no, no. 1960 when no. we're investing I'm not, in GM and GM is good for whatever it's good for. GM is good for the United States. That's not it anymore. I'm not gambling. I say I'm just helping my clients invest money. Wall Street gambles. With, with, with money from the Federal Reserve. Well, They're right. the ones that are trading and proprietary trading. Well, I don't, and know what I don't do that, I don't but know I, agree. Do. I agree. I agree that because of the Fed and because of the government, money that should be invested is being gambled instead. That is the problem. Washington is helping Wall Street bleed Main Street dry. Cronies, cronies like Bill Clinton, who got rid of Glass-Steagall, with uh, corporations and the power of money behind him are what drives you guys. It's a, it's a chicken wait, wait, and wait. egg, an egg and a chicken. Right. You but know, it's not. But, but remember, if so, the money that, that grows the economy is the money that isn't spent. It's savings that drives economic growth. And when you tax the businessman, you're taxing his savings, you're diminishing his ability to grow the economy, to grow his business, and you're sending money to Washington where it's squandered on consumption and government bureaucracy. That's what's destroying the country. You know, you know what the richest county is now in the United States? Washington County. Uh, they, it's now it's now wealthier than, than Silicon Valley the hot, because no, it's all the money going to the bureaucrats. They're raising their pay. They're you know all the lobbyists are getting rich because the government is doling out all these favors. Take away the power of government and you bring the power back to the people. In the last five years, is your income going up or going down in the last five years? How much money do you make and is it increasing? I, I don't. I think it's increasing. But what's your point? Yeah. Yeah. Why is everyone else's uh, annual income stagnating? Because, well, a lot of it is because of inflation that the Federal Reserve creates to prop up failing banks or to prop up the government to pay for the social welfare state. But the reason that the middle class is suffering is because the government is destroying the economy. Capitalism benefits most the middle class and the lower class. That, but we don't have it anymore. That's the problem. How can you blame, the, how can you say that it's just the federal government when the people that were in the government, like uh, Ronald Reagan, Secretary of the Treasury, was, was Don Regan, he was the Secretary of the Treasury then. In the Clinton years, there was uh, Root Secretary of Treasury uh, Rubin, and these guys were head of Goldman Sachs, uh, head no, of Citigroup. I, no, you, and so these are the people that are actually making these no, fine economic remember, policies. Remember, I agree with you on this. I want to get so Wall what, Street's what, what, influence out of Washington. So this is what this is about. Why, why, what are, what are you, what's so when you're talking about you know, businessmen, you're, you're, you're lumping everybody in the same category as Goldman Sachs and J.P. Morgan and Morgan Stanley. They're not. Right. That 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 well, all, all the transactions that are risky are happening right here on Wall Street. Yeah, and they're happening with with government subsidies. Take those subsidies away. Take the cheap money away from the Fed. They while people in D.C. are protesting at the White House or at Capitol Hill, we here in New York are protesting Wall Street because, like, you just agreed with me. They they go hand in hand. They're accomplices. They 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 they're in bed right. together. But, but the, the the people that are in government make, making these policies came straight from here went to the government and then come right back here to make right. even more money after the policies that they, that they passed right. but that are helping them. Protesting here ain't going to do anything. Why? It's We're because them know. Because We're as long, them. but they don't care. As long as, as, long as government, care, then as, should even protest oh, more. As long as government has goodies to hand out, Wall Street's going to want its share. Stop the government from Wall giving out. Create the, the goodies. They're going to go in government right. in order to make the, the laws. But if you take the government out of it, then the only way they can make money is by benefiting everybody else. Right now, they're making money at the expense of other people because they got their You're government doing their like dirty if, work. If there was no government at all, then no, I'm not saying no government at all. I'm so saying limited it's, it's constitutional limited government, government would limited. not change much because it would it might even be easier for them. To no, just no, get in, get no, in the but door. That, no, but there'd be no door to get into. The only way they can as get as money is the government. There'll be a door to get into. Where hmm? should we protest then? The White House, the Federal Reserve, Congress, Supreme. Why does that matter when either way we've started a global thing here and people are really seeing the idea? Doesn't matter where it is when the idea is still getting. But out. what we need to be protesting is government. We want our freedom back. We want our prosperity back. And we're not going to get it from government. We're going to get it from ourselves, from capitalism, from individual entrepreneurship. That's what we need. We need the, the values that the founding fathers 
bestowed on us. We need to go back to that. I agree, but I believe you're stuck on the synecdoche of Wall Street. It doesn't matter that it's Wall Street. Uh, because we're protesting here, it's still know, getting seen wait, everywhere the, the, the rap on this movement is that it's anti-capitalist, anti-business. That it's that you guys are all walking around with copies of the Communist Manifesto in your pocket. That's not true. That's not true at all. All right, well, clear it up. I've seen so many Ron Paul supporters and libertarians here, you'd be surprised. You sound like a libertarian yourself, right? Well, that's what I think. I want you sound like a libertarian yourself, right? There's, there's marchers saying, and the feds, exact same things you're saying. You actually sound like a supporter. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you sound like a supporter. Sound like a the supporter basis of this happened. movement. Yeah, why was the economic advisor the basis, who ran for president in 2008? The basis so, of this oh, movement, right? Baller. Yes. Yeah. That's, That's great. Right. The basis of this movement, right, is that the Wall Street and, uh, and the government are too closely tied together. And you sound like you're against the same issue. Uh, so I really don't see what you're down here trying to explain. Like, can can yeah. you... Uh, I, I, because I want to make with sure. Us. Yeah. But we have to... We have to uh, Focus our anger and our outrage on the government that's made it all possible. Federal Reserve is like what's happening. Yeah, what's happening on Wall Street is a consequence of this power emanating from Washington. We got you got to cut off the head of the snake. So that's how you not, kill it. Should we not protest here? Should we go? Of course. The Fed? Who wouldn't want a bailout if the government came and offered to bail you out? You'd take it. The problem is the government shouldn't be able to offer the money. Look, I wanted every bank that bet wrong to fail. If Ron Paul is so different, how come he always casts his vote with the Republicans? If what? If Ron Paul is that different, how come he always casts his vote with the Republicans? He doesn't, well, he, oh, he he doesn't, doesn't always. He doesn't always. He, he doesn't some, always. No, he's very independent. He's very independent. Okay. For medical doctor, how, wait, wait, wait. For medical doctor, how come he says that if a person has no medical care, you might as well drop dead? That's not what he said. That's what he said. No, he didn't. I listened to it. No, no, no. Ron Paul said. If you have no health care, you might as well drop No. First of all, before the government got involved in health care, was, there was much more access and it was much less expensive. And what happened was Ron Paul pointed out that when he was a doctor a long time ago, people, doctors took care of the poor for free. They, nobody died if they were sick. The problem is the government has run up the cost of health care so much through the tax code, through Medicare, through Medicaid. Anything the government touches, it ruins. It drives up the price. It drives down the quality. Obviously, you never took the Hippocratic oath. Yeah, I wish the government would take the Hippocratic oath and do no harm. Of course you take, because he casts all his votes with the Republicans. So he's he doesn't cast right. all his votes for the Republicans. No, no, he's the most independent voter out there. Check his record. Check his record. Check his record. How do we? You're stuck then. How do we? How do we live? Yes, we need corporations to a certain extent. We need business to a certain extent. We need government to a certain extent. But now you're stuck. Where does one go? Like, what is the limit? What is the limit on business? What is the limit on government? Where do we well, put those? First limits? of all, you know, corporations are simply businesses that incorporated. And corporations are just individuals that got together to run a business. I mean, that's are all they, they are. Individuals are. Should they have corporate personhood? Well, there is. There are legal rights that a corporation has as a fictitious person. But apart from that, that there are fair? people. There's no yes, it's fair. Why? It, because what the corporate structure does is it enables businesses to raise more capital and grow bigger. Because you you shield the, the shareholders. From some of the liability, so, so you make it. It's in the interest, it, of, the it's in the interest of the whole economy because it makes it easier for businesses to expand and make the investments necessary. No, they only do that because the government forces them to because the taxes and regulations too higher. Because remember, the corporations owe an interest to their shareholders. That's what they are. They're just like you. They're the, they're not there to serve society. That's a, that's a they're there to make a profit. Right, but but the result is that they end up serving society through the invisible hand. That's very short-sighted, my friend. No. The reason why is because yes, it helps the invest or the shareholders in the very near future, right? But where are we now? This whole shit show is because of the fact that people weren't thinking long term and but now they weren't now because the government got them all liquored up with cheap money and government guarantees <laughs> yes, and, and you know what them, it's going to get a lot worse you guys ain't seen nothing yet you know I'm wait sure. till you see how much worse it's going to be in a year or two sure. there's going to be more unemployment and then you're going to start to see prices really go up as the dollar collapses in value and food gets a lot more expensive health care wait, okay wait, wait time out there you're still saying that the government is totally totally the only person to blame however corporations are still complicit in their guilt if they're no. the ones that are doing what's ever cheaper look for i said look a lot of people on wall street acted recklessly and they should have been held accountable. They should have been allowed to yeah. lose money. They right. shouldn't have been bailed out. But my question is, why did they do these foolish things? You know, President Bush said Wall Street got drunk. 
he was right. They were all stinking drunk. Right. But the question was, where did they get all that alcohol? So Why were they drunk? But you're blaming the alcoholic for being enabled. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm blaming the bartender for liquoring them up. I'm blaming Alan Greenspan. I'm blaming the Fed and the government so, for doing it. Aren't they both at guilt, though? They're both at guilt, and you're just saying, no, only one is no, no, at no. guilt. I'm not, no, I'm not guilt. excusing them, okay. but I'm saying that if you want to stop the behavior, you got to go to Washington. you got to cut it off at the what source, and you can't say it's capitalism. If people are saying capitalism is failing, it's not working, we haven't even tried it in decades. We need capitalism. That's what does work. We know that works. Okay. Right now, we what, what about the fact that 18 of the of the uh, members of the of the board that have connections to have connections to the bailouts, 18 members of the Federal Reserve Board that have connections to the Federal Reserve are sitting right now on companies that receive part of the 700 billion dollar TARP bailouts. What what about the the uh, conflict of interest that exists between Wall Street and the Federal Reserve? No, you're 100 percent right. It's a disgrace. You know, when I was on television when they first proposed, I was against TARP. I said, look. If there's a bank that is going to fail, you let it fail. You let the shareholders lose money. Let the bondholders lose money. Because if you bail them out now, it's a moral hazard, and we're just going to get more of that bad behavior in the future. You know, capitalism means private losses and private profits. The private It doesn't mean private profits and socialized losses. Wall Street and the Federal Reserve, can you help educate people here as to why we believe there's a conflict of interest between the interests of Wall Street and the Fed? Well, the problem is the banks are keeping interest rates artificially low to prop up the speculative activity on Wall Street. What we actually need in this country is higher interest rates, not lower interest rates, because that'll take the money out of Wall Street, put it back on Main Street, Businessmen can't borrow money at these low interest rates. It's all going to the government through guaranteed debt, through the treasury market, through the corporate bond market. There's no real capital available for Main Street. But if we let interest rates go up, number one, people will stop spending and start saving again because they can get a decent interest rate on their savings and there'll be more capital on Main Street to fund new businesses, to produce things here, to hire people here. But of course, if we want to do all that, we need to get the government to repeal a lot of the rules and regulations that have artificially increased the cost of doing business and hiring people in this country. Wait, I, I, I want to understand because you seem to well, agree. Oh, get else. Who's new? Who has an ask? Yeah, I'm from Madison, Wisconsin. I flew in today, and, and deregulation is what caused this mess. Uh, in Wisconsin, when we had 150,000 people in the street marching against Governor Scott Walker, I personally uh, was integral in occupying our state capital. Yeah. And I got to tell you, he was funded by the Koch brothers. They're selling off our state. They're cutting wages. They're yeah. shipping in low pages and unbenefited jobs. You're sitting on trillions and trillions of dollars of wealth and not investing it back. Okay, in the Hold country. on. Which regulations do you think that were repealed caused the crisis? Let's start with Glass-Steagall. Let's, okay. let's go back to Glass-Steagall. Okay, that's, that. that's one regulation. But you know how many other regulations were, were passed? In addition to that, they have net piled on a lot more regulations. So they repealed tax rate uh, for the for the top one percent back to where it was when they made more than two million dollars. That next dollar was taxed at seventy four percent. Wait a minute. How about we do that? So you think that the government should take seventy four percent of my money? I think if you're making more than two million dollars, I think that's when I, we had the biggest growth in the economy is uh, when uh, uh, it discouraged millionaires from paying themselves huge bonuses. They reinvested it back in their companies. They created jobs for the workers, no. and instead they sit on their cash now and they let the rest of us drown no, in debt and, and, and then sit on the street and go homeless. And it's ridiculous. No, but so you think that I should pay 70% of my income above $2 million in tax? Yes. Do you yeah, think? I think your next dollar should be taxed at 74 Okay, so if that's the deal, you know what I would do? Once my income got to $2 million, I would stop working for the year. Right. I would furlough my employees and say, you know what? I've made my limit. I'm not going to work for $0.30 cents on the dollar. I'm playing golf. I'm going fishing. I'll see you next February. How about that? How, how, come that, how come that didn't apply in the 1970s and 1960s? Because nobody paid those taxes back then. You know how many? I would much rather. economy was when they affect the tax. You can because no one paid those high taxes. That correlation with the national debt and the lowering no. of the effective tax no. rate on the wealthiest people in this country. You're not fooling anybody. Well, first of all, wait, statistics. Wait. We've all read it. Okay. There is no such thing as trickle down economy. No. The only thing that trickles okay. down is you guys. The income tax. The, the income the tax didn't even start until 1913. So before that, there were no income taxes at all. And we built the wealthiest the country in the world. We had the industrial we revolution. The Great Depression. We know though. The, what are you talking no, about? No, no. We had the Great Depression. No, that because was the lowest effective tax rate. That's no, why no, we no. Well, 
because we the, weren't happy. Well, first of all, the depression was in the 30s, not 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 1913. That's when but, it began because there was because the uh, there was no income tax rate no, no, no. on the it, wealthy. The income tax is not why we had a depression. What happened was the Federal Reserve printed too much money in the 1920s. They created a real estate bubble and a stock market bubble. And then when it burst, Herbert Hoover, instead of letting the free market work, came in with all this government props and bailouts that tried to interfere. And he created the Depression. And then Roosevelt made it great by interfering even more by taking Hoover's entire plan and expanding no, it. Wrong. No, no. That's wrong. You, you only think it's wrong because you got brainwashed in a government school. I didn't bring love. I, I, can, I can read uh, studies from the economic policy. Well, you're I mean, it's pretty simple. Or the, or the, or you haven't read any of my stuff. I'll tell you this. I'll, I'll tell you this right now. Uh, when FDR raised the effective tax rate for, for millionaires uh, throughout this country, we saw the biggest expansion of the middle class and elimination of poverty in this country. We saw well, you, 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 growth. You're just making this years. stuff up. This is just revisionist well, history. Well, All right, let's about? talk about now. The suburbs no. in America, where were they built? Uh, how, how, how would taking money away from businessmen, let's say the government was going to take 70% of my income away, the income that I would use to Not invest your in. income, your income after you make right. $2 million. All right, right. So that is the money that I would, okay. Okay, so the money that, so let's say I'm making $10 million, the government says, okay, we're going to take $7 million away from you. Right. And and now, how is that going to help the country by taking money away from me that I might have invested in growing my business? You're yourself that money and sitting it in some bank account across the you're going to reinvest it in No, no, but what do you think What do you think the banks do with the money? They, they loan it out to businesses. Where do you think credit comes from? If you take money away from the people who earn it and save it and send it to Washington, it's going to get squandered and you're going to destroy the incentives the to grow the economy. lowered the tax rates in the 1980s and they effectively went down. You see a decline in the. You see an increase in the national debt, and you see a decline. Well, that, that's in the because middle class. No, but that's because the government kept spending money. You can't blame the problems on the tax cuts. Yeah, I know. You got to blame. We should the spend money on the homeless and the poor and the sick. We should. That's all not where the money was going. I just want to say something real short. I'm also a one percent. And I think you're making us look really bad. How do you figure? Because I think you're just your facts are wrong, your logic is wrong. I well, don't my, want to get into a long discussion, but I don't think that you're helping. Well, my facts aren't wrong, but as as a member of the one percent, what are, what do you think? Do you want? Do you think your taxes should be raised? Yes, I do. Well, I mean, and for a long time, you know what happened? What percent of your income do you pay in taxes? Ten percent. All right. Well, ten. Well, you're not in the one percent because I'm paying fifty percent. So you're only paying 10% in taxes? It has to do with how you invest your money, doesn't it? Well, I'm not paying 10%. I'm paying 50 All right. Well, would you? How would you like to pay 50% like me? I would. Oh, really? Well, then why not write a bigger check when you pay your taxes instead of paying 10%? I would be very, I think. Well, no one's stopping you from paying more taxes. Can I, excuse me. Can I do this? Can I do this? I want to tell you something. After after World War II, do you know what the tax rate was? you know what the marginal tax rate was after World War II? It got up to 90%. It was 90%. Yeah, but nobody paid it. And But, but before 1913, it was zero. Yeah, and for many, many, many years until recent history, it was around 70%. It has it only come down from 70% over the last 20, 30 years. Yes, but there were... But Many years, people did not go play golf when they got to 70%. They did not go to the beach. They, they, they kept working. They, they did No, they didn't pay. No, nobody paid... Check, nobody actually paid the 70%. There were so many loopholes and deductions... I'm glad you're talking, but I think there's a many other one percenters who would strongly disagree with you. Well, I can tell you this. Most people that make a lot of money, they're not going to work for 30 cents on the dollar. They're going to enjoy their free... You, you don't know anybody who works for 30 cents on the dollar. You know people who are going to work their butts off to keep 30 cents? A lot of time in Europe, and trust me, there's a no. lot of people who work very hard there, and marginal they're not, tax rates are, are... No, they're not. They're not paying those kind of taxes. They're not. So what is not true? I lived in Europe. There are plenty of people in Europe who believe in, in investing in the state and being good citizens. You're shooting American exceptionalism, this American exceptionalism line that you're some kind of special cat. You're not, man. But the reason that I'm here has nothing to do with the history of income tax in this country, and it has everything to do with the fact that no one has been held responsible for the financial folly that brought this country yeah. down. We should hold need. Yeah, we should hold some of these people like Alan Greenspan, like Senator Chris Dodd or Senator Barney Frank, or we should hold some of these people. Instead, we promote them. Look at Tim Geithner. He was a he was the head of the New York Fed, and now we made him Secretary of the Treasury. Let's take turns talking, okay? Yeah, let's bring somebody down. I don't know who it is. 
you seem to have very strong ideas about who you think it is, but let's bring somebody to justice. Well, I've got a lot of credit. the law, I go to jail. If the CEO of Chase breaks the law, he gets a bonus. Well, I agree with you, but I have a lot of credibility on this because I wrote a book predicting the financial crisis, the bursting of how the, the crash proof. So, well, it, Book about the downfall. No, it was a very hard to do because very few people did it. Are you kidding me? People were laughing on me on national television when I told them what was going to happen. Yeah, very few people predicted this. And I, I predicted it because I understood how government policy was creating the problems. All I'm saying is that somebody needs to be brought to justice. I agree. I agree with you. Any other questions? Hold on. Are you going to come with us on our next Occupy the Fed march? I don't know. Who's going to be there? A Everybody. lot of people. We already had one. We started here. We're trying to educate the people here because they, they didn't know that the Fed is a lot of, of the problem, printing the money out of thin air, backed by nothing. The Fed is a big part of the problem. And in fact, if it wasn't for the Fed, the government couldn't spend all this money because the Fed is buying up all these bonds, which is allowing the government to plunge the people deeper into debt and is preventing the economy from correcting itself. We have got serious structural economic problems, and we're only making them worse. And the Fed is helping the government get it, make it worse by buying up all those bonds. Because what's growing right now is not our economy, but our government. And the bigger the government gets, the poorer we all get, because we have to support that government. So they're like the drug dealer. I mean, exactly. that, that's all they're doing is supplying the... We're addicted to cheap money, and they keep feeding the addiction, and we're going to overdose if we don't, if we don't change. Okay, so um, 1122 is our next... Occupy the Fed March, and you, you and your brother are welcome to join All us. Right, well, maybe we'll be there. <laughs> That's actually my question you because, because you seem, I'm sorry, you seem down here. I mean, it looked at first it looks like you're antagonizing us a little bit, but you actually seem to agree with a lot of stuff that we're, we're saying, even if it, with some other. Oh, I agree. You disagree look, strongly, and I disagree with some of the things you look, say. Strongly. I'm afraid that a lot of people here, if we don't change, they're not going to stay here. People are going to leave the country looking for opportunity because we're going to destroy it. If that's we don't, why, if we don't why. roll back the government and we don't get rid of all these regulations and taxes, there's going to be no opportunity here for the young okay, people. Okay, see, that part, for example, I disagree with. I don't think that we need to roll back regulations. I think that's part of the problem. However, you do still seem to agree, and you, you said you agreed when I, when I mentioned the fact that they're one and the same. Wall Street and the government is one and the same. People that are in DC, in DC are trying to protest and start the Occupy DC movement, and they're protesting the government. But us here, we're protesting Wall Street because it's also the government. Since, like I told you before, they managed to find themselves seats in the government. Right, but and, and then, and then, you're not going to change it from here. It has to be changed anywhere. legislatively and in the ballot box because it's all it's because of the rules and regulations that emanate from but Washington. Wall here, Street is just trying to get its, its here, piece of that pie. That us, you don't think wrong. that us being here has the, the, the government listening and following? No, and but, but the appearance about? is that you guys are against capitalism no, and business, no, and this a, is the symbol. Small, that's a tiny minority. That Those are the diehard extremists here, and maybe some other people that, that are not extremists but are, are still pro-socialist or whatever. But a lot of, I'm willing to bet the majority of people here are pro-capitalism. I'm pro-capitalism, but I don't think that that means that. That's that, kind of what I'm thinking. That's why I wanted to come down and clear up these misunderstandings and, and because the movement is getting a bad rap a lot of people based here, on a lot of people here it's a marxist a lot of movement here for different reasons but there's a fundamental uh, discontent and the fundamental discontent with the way things are with the state of the economy and also with the ease with which people and from in government and in wall street go back and forth and that's the main and you said you agreed with that that they should not be able to just walk right in the government and sit well sit, if, Sit on they, I don't care if they walk in, but if they have no power, if they have no no special interest to dole out, it won't matter if they're there. But if, if you they, take, if, if you if limit there, the power of government, they can't do all but this. But if harm. if somebody from Wall Street, from Goldman Sachs manages to become Secretary of the Treasury, you don't think that he's going to try to push and advise the president and the whole cabinet on ways to to but benefit it, Wall Street, but his, his sector where he comes but from. But if you if you take away the power of the government to benefit Wall Street, he can talk until he's blue in the face no, and nothing's going to happen. He'll try to change it. He'll try to. He'll no. try to are, are just, only enforced against the 99 percent. The one percent, it's selectively enforced just against us. So no, we I'm can talking about you take laws, away the but, subsidies, you take away the, the the cheap money from the Fed, and you let Wall Street know, you let a bank know that if you invest poorly and you go under, you're going to lose. You let the bondholders know if you loan money to somebody that doesn't pay you back, you're out of luck. The government's not going to come in and and subsidize your losses. So, let but the, business but the, but the know. Money, 
But that, the main reason that the government is so eager to come in and, and help is because their economic advisors are these guys. Yeah. And that, <laughs> well, that's a fundamental more. They're getting a lot of bad advice, that's for sure. Well, from these guys because their whole job and is because, to maximize profits well, and socialize risk and just, you know, right. take but, as many right. risks as possible as long as they can satisfy but their But they can only socialize the risks if the government lets them. Correct. So we got to stop the, the government. Reason, but the reason, so but the very be in favor of higher taxes unless those they get if they do socially responsible things you get tax breaks no well i don't want I higher taxes money. we have too much taxes yeah but if you got higher taxes but you got way lower taxes if you invested in socially responsible no, no. acts no but, but then i don't want the government deciding what's socially responsible i don't want the government picking winners but and we losers vote on what's socially yeah. responsible with your dollar no but no you vote on it with the money that you spend if you want to if you want to patronize a socially responsible we government if what we say we and what we vote means we have nothing. government only the money in our pockets Means anything, government is to protect our rights, to protect anything. our liberty, our life, our property. That's why government is there to secure liberty. That's why we instituted it. So all the rest of it is up to us. Tax breaks for investing in rights and socially responsible. No, no, I don't want the government determining. That's how we get stuff like Solyndra, where where uh, Obama decides to guarantee five hundred billion dollars worth of debt, and now we taxpayers or five hundred we're eating it because Obama decided that that was socially responsible, well, I'm and we lost all our money. No, I'm not agreeing that it should be insured. I'm saying that you should get lower taxes on money that goes no, to No, I want everybody to be taxed equally and I want to lower the taxes on everybody because the money is much better in the hands of the people who earned it than the bureaucrats in Washington because all they're going to do is use it to get reelected and it's going to hurt the economy. But aren't the Wall Street people backing the people who are trying to get into government? Because they want the power that they can get back. They want the special favors. We got to take away the ability. Right. Yes, but protesting. you got to take away the ability of government to give out special favors. If, if we follow the Constitution, there'd be no special favors to give out. There'd be no perks. I agree, but in that case, I, my, my fundamental point with, with you right now is that you should be joining this whole movement and that the people that are listening to to what the, the stream live stream or whatever that are conservative might actually agree with well, a that, lot of us because you all seem to think that we're anti cap i mean who here is pro capitalism who here is pro capitalism all right that, that's a lot of hands i mean yeah that's no, a i know i mean look i was when i ran so for senate down here even if it's for slightly different reasons well i was at a look i was a lot of tea party rallies and i when i ran for senate i had a lot of tea party support and i've been saying hey we got to get these movements together because in many cases they have the same sympathies yes there's going to be the extremists out there that have a marxist uh, you know socialist type agenda but there are a lot of people that actually understand some of these problems well, but a my, lot of my, people here are not, there are very few well, Marxists here. I a system yeah. that works. Whether you call it capitalism or not, it doesn't matter to me. So, I just want a system so that works. Well, capitalism does work until government interferes. And the problem is, the government interferes, things get bad, and then the government blames it on capitalism. It's not John capitalism's Adam, fault. Who, who it is the wealth the nations? Who wrote Wealth of Nations? Adam Smith. And what did he say about government intervention when the market fails? When you have market failure, what does he say about government intervention? Well, you blame, they always blame the government. Oh, going back to the facts. Wait, <laughs> isn't he not huh? the godfather of modern He's economics? He is the founder of economics, okay, you're correct. so what did he say when there's Tell market me what he failure? Said. What did he say Tell about market what failure? What did he, he say? He government intervenes. Government uh, yes. has to intervene. No, government intervenes to cause the failure. That's the no, problem. No, that's not what he said. Yes, no, well, no, well, you know I'm right. No, I don't. I don't know you're right. I don't know you're right. No, but you. It's didn't. not capitalism no. when you have monopolies. No, no that's right. anti-capitalism. No, but government and creates. That's the world no, we're living in but today. it's you government. Have monopolies running it. No, but government licenses the monopolies. Without government, monopolies wouldn't exist unless they were giving people the best possible and deal. Who owns our government right now? Uh, not me, yeah. They're, they're, <laughs> but there are a lot of people that are owning the government because the government has the influence so to sell. Saying, and that's what we're protesting. By the trickle down theory that's been in place. It, well, it, that, no, it hasn't no, been in place. It's gotten a bad name. No. What's, what's the federal tax rate? The 1% yeah, I'm paying half years my years income in taxes. Not the lowest no, been in over 20 no, years? if I is earn, no, let me correct it's you. Not? If I earned my money 30 years ago, I would pay a much lower tax than I do today. Hold on, no, if I earned my money 30 years ago, I would pay a much lower total tax than I pay today because I have far fewer deductions and exemptions than were abound back then. And 100 years ago, the entrepreneurs paid no federal taxes, and that's when we built a vibrant economy. That's when we created the whole middle class. It was because Actually, we were free. Unions built the middle class. No, they didn't. <laughs> unions built the middle class. They helped. Unions helped destroy all the industries that they infected. Capitalists 
like workers were paid a lot more you before have you have morals and act morally and not immoral. capitalism is moral class. capitalism is the only moral system that socialism is the people running are not capitalists and they're immoral that's why you have the conditions that exist today so third moral is I, how, can I, I, you, how can you expect morals out of a society that was built on greed and hope well there's nothing immoral about greed I mean, everybody, everybody wants no, I, things. I, I kind of agree with that, but don't you think it should be hard, it should be kept in check? It, the free market keeps it in check. No, it does the, not. No, because the free market allows them, especially at this point where people are making so much money. No, I mean, but remember, in a free market, people are greedy, but they're also fearful. They want to make money, but they're afraid of losing the money. Market, the government comes in and subsidizes the losses. That's what lets greed cause problems when the government takes away the risk. Yes, when, exactly. When they do sub subsidize the risk, that, that does ca cause a problem. But don't you think that in itself, the free market on its own, when it gets to a point, people are just going to try to maximize profits. Regardless but what's wrong of with, risk. but how do you maximize profits in a free society? It depends. It, it depends what, what sector well, you're in. The way you, but the way look, they did it here, the way they did it here was to take people's mortgages. No, but but that's but that's government. That's government intervention with subsidized no, no, mortgages. No, firms here. No, were, no, but the were, government was backing people's mortgages because the government guaranteed them. Look, and they had nothing to do with, with if, asking the government. If if a businessman wants to maximize his profits without government help, without special perks, what do they have to do? They have to figure out what consumers want and find the most efficient way to give it well, to them. The and the sector, more the they, look, they, the they more you really satisfy consumers. They, they do. Deal. They I deal. I deal with consumers who want my help. But yes, in, in there are a lot of financiers who do nothing but speculate with money they get from the Fed on products that are insured by the government. That is not capitalism. That is destroying capitalism. But so, so, so you should be. Huh? Why are you against unions? I'd like. I just need an explanation. Well, I'm not against unions. What I'm against is when unions have special laws that help enable them to extort. Uh, money from employers and help drive them out of business. I mean, well, unions isn't that just in response to the no, that, doing the same thing. No, they're not doing the same thing. Okay. Look, it's not. Look, it's. It's not a. It's. It's not a coincidence. It's not a coincidence that all the jobs. Hold on. It's not a coincidence. Yeah. It's not a coincidence that all the companies that were heavily unionized are the ones that have gone bankrupt. The unions played a big role in bankrupting these companies. So but if you, wait, 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 wait. but I will tell you, you walk something. Walk away from a system. Walk away from a system that was working because it had but, faults. So but I will tell you. But I, but it's a tug of war. But it's always been a tug of war. I will war. tell you. Let me let me tell you. you hold on. Rope, let me tell you. Ford. Hold on. Ford Motor Company paid its workers more money before there were any unions. Before there was any minimum wage, Ford workers who were on the factory lines got paid more money in 1914 you know, than they do today, adjusted for inflation. Much more money. No, and there was, and that was because of capitalism. He paid his workers. With the system doesn't mean you try not to work within the system and fix it. No, no. You don't walk away from capitalism because you feel like it's broken. No, no. We try to fix it. No, but capitalism is. Unions walk away from. Capitalism doesn't need to be fixed. It needs to be restored. We don't have it anymore. We don't have it together. We don't have it because there's monopoly. No, no, it's not. We don't have it. We don't have it because we have too much government regulation and taxation. Right. Well, if. Well, what? Okay. First of all, what monopoly are you talking? No. What monopoly are you talking about? Do you feel like Chase has kind of taken over? Chase, Chase, a bank? They're not a monopoly. There are plenty of banks. But when you have a monopoly, government gives them a license. But look, but that's not a monopoly. There, there's there's to be a monopoly. But when you're dealing with five major banks, three or four. But I agree. The banks get government subsidies. I want to take those subsidies away from banks. I don't want. I don't want. The bailout shouldn't have happened. Are you saying the bailout shouldn't have? No, I was against them at the time. They should totally. But look, I want to get the government. Look, I don't want the government. Right. I don't want the government. Step up. I didn't hear anyone stepping up and saying. I don't want the government getting involved in these rich guys. I stepped up. I was there. But look, I don't want the government guaranteeing your bank account. I want the banks to have to prove to you that they're sound. I don't want the government guaranteeing that account so you you don't care what they do with your money. I want to get the government out of banking. That's the problem. So what we need is educated consumers because these libertarian ideals, they work when you have an educated consumer base. But the problem is many Americans do not have the type of fiscal education that they would need to make the kind of decisions that would promote their lifestyle. And when there only is a Walmart in 50 miles of your house and you're only shopping at Walmart, 
And maybe you don't even know what Walmart does. And maybe you disagree with Walmart if you knew about Walmart. But so what we need to do is promote education and fiscal education to create smart consumers. Yeah, well, I think you, you, know, I think you, you should give uh, the average American a little bit more credit. People, I think, can make the best decisions for themselves. I think people can decide for themselves better than Washington deciding for them. I, I, I think people will make good choices. You know, people are going to shop around. They're going to look for a bargain. They're going to try to spend as little money as possible to get as much value as they can. I have confidence that the market Sorry, will work. Are you okay with us importing all of our goods from and borrowing money from communist China to no. support the lower production rate? I, no, for I would. American consumer? I, no, I'm not okay with it. It's terrible. Okay. And it wouldn't happen if we had a freer economy. Economy. We would produce Don't these we things have less ourselves. Regulations today, though. Than no, we have a lot more, and we have, we have a lot. Do we have more regulations today than post-American yeah. depression? Yes, and we have a lot yeah. more than China. There is more capitalism in communist China than there is in America. That's the problem. What's the average wage for a Chinese worker? So you don't believe in minimum wage? No, it should be zero. You it should be abolished. Absolutely not. Why, why do you, you like feel about slavery? You're okay. I'm, I'm, wait, so you, but <laughs> what does okay. the minimum wage have to do with slavery? I don't know. I'm just asking if you're for it. I mean, in a capitalist society, that's ideal, right? If you no. don't pay your workers. Well, actually, on your P and L line, your employment costs. Actually, I'll give I'll, I'll give you a little bit so of history. Hold on. That out, you slavery money, right? is bad business because slaves don't work very hard. It's much more economical to pay workers. They work actually, a lot this harder. This country was built on the backs of slaves. No, it so wasn't. They actually, worked pretty hard. No, it wasn't. It wasn't <laughs> built on the backs Thank of slaves. You, really? But Thank no, you. it wasn't. Thank you. you think there was slavery up north? No. But slave, slave, we had the, the, the people, the people working, the people that were working in the factories were in slaves. This, the South would have been better if it was paying people, but that, that that's a whole other story. But as far as the minimum wage, all the minimum wage does is set a level below which people are not allowed to work. The minimum wage just destroys employment opportunities for the unskilled uh, uh, workers. You know. You can't hire somebody if if they don't have enough productivity. Seven twenty-five an hour. There's someone less skilled. Well, first there, of all, there it's, are people that deserve less than seven twenty-five an hour. Well, first of all, it's not just seven twenty-five because you got to pay payroll taxes I, and I'm a so. Business owner. I so, understand. I'll add twenty-five so, percent. Yeah. So let's say ten bucks. Yes, there are people who don't have enough productivity to be worth ten dollars an hour. They don't. Now a lot of them are young. They're fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. But you know what? If they can get a job at four or five dollars an hour, maybe by the time they're twenty, they'll be able to make fifteen or twenty dollars an hour. But they never get their first job because we've priced them out of the market. It's not true in my experience. Not at all. I would say most of the people who start at minimum wage or slightly better are in that. So I don't tend to hire 15 and 16 year olds, but definitely of the 17, 18, 19 year old entering college age. And move up from there. I think look, that's plenty. Look, I was I was in I went to the movies this Saturday night, and I had to wait on this long line on a Saturday night to get popcorn because there was only one person working behind the counter. Meanwhile, there were five other stations. There was nobody there. Now, why? Because the theater can't afford to hire anybody. You think what would it be so horrible if we let them hire some kids to work there? Because they, the wages are too high. They have to come down. We can't. You can't hire somebody if it's too expensive. People can barely live off the wages they're making now, and you but, want to lower them. You know, if 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 you're if you're a student and you want a job on a weekend, you don't need to support a family. You just need some extra bucks. But what if you need to pay for college? And what if you have loans? And what well, if it's cheaper to go somewhere? I, it's cheaper for me to go out of this country and get an education. Unfortunately, but that's because the government has driven up the cost. Can I ask a question? Are you actually saying that people should be making lower than minimum wage? I think there should be no minimum wage, and people should make whatever they can make. I mean, they right now, the minimum wage, nothing? no, they wouldn't. I mean, first of all, I don't even employ anybody at the minimum. Everybody I employ is way above the minimum wage. You think I would pay them all minimum wage if I could, but, but they'd all quit. The they, they, they circumvent no. minimum wage laws by going outside of the country <laughs> no. to essentially create slavery in our I'm, No, it's not. And that's where we no. buy all of our products from. If, but no, but if you, a, a, a voluntary a voluntary relationship is not slavery. If I offer somebody a job and they take it, that's not slavery. They're free to quit. No, they always have a choice. I mean, Nike, for example. Okay, you say we can abolish the minimum wage, but we know how much Nike would be willing to pay people to make their shoes. They'd be willing to pay them 19 cents. Look, Singapore has no minimum wage, and they have higher wages than we do, and no unemployment, and they have a booming economy. You don't need a minimum wage. Minimum wage destroys jobs. 
particularly for the youngest people, for the low skilled people. Why is it that we all so pump why our own have gas? Been stagnant and only, only, like, yeah, because the, we don't have the top one percent has been going up and rising be, way out of pace with yes. the income for, for everyone else. That's because of the problems we talked about. Government is too involved. Government is is doing that through subsidies, through banking, through the Federal Reserve. How's the government subsidy preventing a company from paying me more money? Because they're they're increasing the cost of hiring you. Because of all the rules and all the regulations, you have no idea how expensive it is to hire people. When I, but, when I, when it, it can't cost them no. that much. It, it does. Them, the, the top one percent, no. the executives, you know, are paying themselves so much more money. When I, when so I they ran, must have, they no. must be making a when lot I ran money. for Senate, I talked to a lot of small businessmen, and 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 they they say I don't want to hire anybody. They do whatever they can. They'll outsource. They'll use a machine. They'll get a temp agency. People don't want the government headache of becoming an employer. The minute you're an employer, there's so many rules and regulations. They're all over you, and they but can that's sue in you. Order to protect us. In order but they protect protect the workers. They protected the workers out of from jobs. The abuse, uh, but you're from overworking us from paying us nothing. You know what protects? So that's why we no. Have unions, what pro why what protects the workers from being abused is they can quit. Competition. No, they got another. In a poor job market. In this Go job to market, another. No. How? Why would I quit my job in this job market? Well, well then, well then maybe your employer is doing you a favor then by giving you a job. Huh? No, if but they're giving me a job on terms that are unfair to me. But well I have then, no get, other choice. I have no, no other choice. but if, if if they're giving you the be if you say that hey I can't quit because the guy that's hiring me now is making me a better deal than anybody else, he's doing you a favor. He's giving you it's your not best that option. He's making me a better deal. He's making me the only deal because well then be the glad he's there. there. And what I'm if glad you, he's there, but I wish that he would be more fair. That's well, well, I, well then, well what's fair? I mean, if you're I mean, worth more, he'll pay it. Would be would be for for the management of a company to not get paid so much more well, no. than the workforce. I mean, I understand. Okay, but you're a free. Look, you're there's free to quit and start your own business if you think you can do better well, on your I own. I don't have the funds to do that yet. Well, then I be glad. I just need to support my family. That's but it. then be glad that you got a job. And you know, if the I'm government, glad that, but, but if the government about being fair, I mean, you had slaves. That, but this is not slavery. No, no, no. Is wrong. No, this but you're, the principle that you're advocating. You had slavery back then, where slaves would it's prefer slave. to be enslaved. Rather the, than to roam the no, streets the and get killed or hunted, quit. the slave had no choice. There was a guy no, with they a whip standing over. Under debt, sir. Huh? Neither can people buried under mountains and mountains of debt. Well, how'd they get? Where? How'd they get all that debt? debt? From government, government, government sub the yeah, government to. subsidized loans. If the slave ran that away, debt. it would either starve to death or be killed or re or re-enslaved. And today, if you run away from a job, you might just starve to death and be homeless. It's basically the same thing. That's why, because of the of the job market and the way it is, and the high unemployment and underemployment, we have a lot of people have no choice but to take on the shittiest job they can find just because it's there. But if it wasn't there, then they'd be in an even worse shape. So, so be glad the shittiest job is there. No, we're glad yeah. it's there. But w what about it being more fair? What do you but think it about is that? Fair. It is right. fair, and if and if and if the government and if you go and say, well, let's force the employer to pay me more. What if he says, you know what? Then I'm just going to fire you because I'm not going to pay you more. Don't you think that's immoral when he gets paid so much money? But couldn't he no. see some of his income? No, no. And still be a rich millionaire. The, the employer doesn't get paid. He pays himself. I pay myself. Nobody pays with the me. With money, with the money from your workforce, because productivity I generate in some country. Productivity but also, works. how about this? You know, when your boss hires you, if he loses money. He doesn't come back and say, hey, you know, I had a bad month, I lost money. Why don't you write me a check and give me back no, some of your wages? But he doesn't but no, but he doesn't go backwards and say, hey, write write me a check to pay for my losses. The boss only gets paid after all the workers get their share. They only get what's but left he over. Fires them. If, if a company is making less money, the boss rarely, after, rarely lowers his own wage. No, but after the fact. After the fact. But initially, the employer doesn't know if he's going to make any money. He has no idea if there's going to be anything left over at the end of the day. He has to pay all of his expenses, all the overhead, all the workers. He only makes money if there's any money left over. Nobody pays the boss. He pays himself. Yeah, through his workforce. Be, and he, no, but, but because without, he has a workforce. So, no. Yeah, if, if the head of GE with, or whatever, without the, like, without the employer there is no workforce. Somebody has to organize it. Somebody has to put it together. It's well, like he he's it the conductor he of the orchestra. Right. Without the conductor, there's no music. Well, no, he has managers that conduct it for him. But who's and, and running the managers? Well, he, he is supposedly, but it, once you set up a company, at a, after a certain point, it runs itself. It runs itself. No, it doesn't. And, yeah, it does. And all, all you have to do, basically, is sit back and, and take in the profits. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's not as easy okay, as you think. He's got an interesting question. Okay. So what is your answer to... Your, your answer to companies that pay bonuses to CEOs of companies that fail. 
No, okay, now this is something you got to take up with the shareholders. See, the shareholders are paying those bonuses, and I think, look, I wouldn't want to own stock in a company that's paying out big bonuses uh, to managers. So, but you you vote with your feet. No one for that's the shareholder problem. That money comes from shareholders. So, okay. what I'm upset about is when the government takes taxpayer money and bails. And bail. No, it's the shareholders. Now, some of them might be poor. I don't know who owns the stock. It's not, it's not, it's not the shareholders or the board members. Well, the board members are voting the bonuses, but the shareholders are approving the board. And the shareholders can sell their so stock whole, if they don't like what the company is doing. Whole, it's a whole system then. It's a whole structure that, that's com complicit in the state of things as they are now. But my, 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 the point I was trying to get at before with you being down here is just that, you, once again, would you join would you recommend people that are, might be listening to you to kind of join into this movement even if they believe different things than us if as you expressed earlier you still had this fundamental sense that things are messed up and aren't yeah. fair but that, you want to join the it the government is the problem as is as is wall street right. as are the people no, here i agree with that but what we don't want because there's a lot of you know people that want more from government government do this spend this provide this government the government out. has nothing it only has what it takes and when it takes from one person well, and gives to somebody else, and Social Security, we what's get wrong with that? No, but we get health care from the market, from capitalism. No, that's where that, we get but, good health care, not that, from the that's government. Where been, so that's where we have been because there. of government involvement. That's why it's so expensive. Anything that we want. Look at this phone. Did the government give you that phone? No, but capitalism produced that phone. Well, the All the things the that work well come from capitalism. The, the prices of these phones are coming the down every year the because of capitalism. The, the no, the government subsidized the industries that created. No, the government didn't subsidize those industries. Yeah, it it taxed mean, those industries. A lot, a lot of these things come from the military. Which no, 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 no. That's, that's, that's not. A fact. That's a fact. No, it's that's. A fact. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Well, we want to we want to take away its power and then get rid of it. Yeah. I have a question. I'm a Ron Paul supporter. I would have voted for you if I lived in Connecticut, if you ran. But I, I do have a question. How do you explain in a free market capitalistic system which we both support, I think the folks around here might agree that when Wall Street created the mortgage, mortgage derivative and then the CDO, CDOs credit default swaps rather off of that, I mean, that was free market run amok. Well, and that, that is where we are now. Right, with but if trillions the Fed, of dollars if, on these banks. Right, books but if the Fed didn't have interest rates down at 1%, none of these products could have been created. Right. That's where they came from. The, the, the whole subprime mortgage market was the result of the teaser rate, courtesy of the Fed, and Fannie and Freddie Mac being the biggest buyers of this crap. They bought up all the paper. Right. It was Fannie and Freddie that created the market that Wall Street was feeding. So if you took government out of the mix, if you got rid of Fannie and Freddie and the FHA, and if we had sound money and a market set interest rate, the housing bubble never got created. There was no subprime. None of these things would have been structured. Last question, question and response. Then what, okay, fair enough, but why? Well, how did I predict it in advance? I knew it all was gonna happen and warned about it because I understood it. And I watched him all the time, he did. He did. Um, why did they hide all of this stuff off their balance sheets, the banks? If I mean, that's that's got to be. You got to agree well, that we should have open balance sheets, right? Yeah, look, sheets, right? a lot of the stuff was on the balance the sheets, but everybody, but see, but everybody assumed that real estate prices would never go down. It was bad data going in. Do you think they, they, they didn't? They didn't think it was possible to lose all this money. Do you think that the accounting should be out in the open? All these banks' books should be well clear I think and open it, well, and in the light. Well, what I want to do is is that, that should be between the, uh, the the banks and their shareholders or their depositors. I want to get the government out of banking. I agree. Get of government guaranteed bank accounts, we let's have a free that. market. The shareholders would be a lot less inclined to buy. And the bondholders bank and the America depositors. If they knew their books. The depositors wouldn't put money in banks right. that were taking reckless risk because they wouldn't want to lose their money. Right. So let's have banks compete for safety. They don't do that now. Thank you. Yes, should we, we should remove all the capital gains and taxes from gold and silver so people can. Well, we should remove the tax. We should, the Ron Paul's got it right. We got to get rid of the taxes on gold and silver so that it can we can compete with the Federal Reserve note. But it would be better if we could just go back on a gold standard and have real money. Should, should Google be able to create their own currency and we use it in exchange? Oh. Hey, if you want to. Yeah. All right, now I got to get going too because I got to.
an appointment. Oh, no, I was just following up. So it sounds like you're against all regulation in the banking industry as far as, like, government. And you, you don't think, I, that, I, that's, I you want, don't think that's some regu uh, I want free market regulation, private sector regulation. That okay. works. Uh, I, 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 I mean, know, you can make an argument that higher regulation could have, you know, possibly prevented it. No, well, look, the problem was the government was too involved. But are you saying if the government is going to no, ensure... No, I mean, just more regulation on derivatives, some, you know, some, No, some day, uh, there was no... Options. No. What, with, 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 with the Fed doing what they were doing, with Fannie and Freddie doing what they were doing, it was inevitable. Well, but, I mean, maybe you'd but, be regulating that market more. But, but if, I mean, we, we had continually lowered and lowered regulations, and we got... No, no, we weren't continually lowering and lowering them. We weren't doing that. We were get, we, we were we were layering more and more regulations. I worked well, I mean, in the financial open, like, you're, I mean, your commercial banking was like over... You were starting to open up those, like, Chinese walls. And, but there was more... They, they were adding more regulations than they were eliminating. The net effect was a higher regulated market. Like, but if you're going to... If you're going to insure the bank deposits, then you have to regulate what the banks do. So I'm all for regulation if you make the mistake of insuring the deposits. But if you're smart enough not to insure the deposits, you don't need the government regulation because then you have market regulation that is far more effective. But anyway, we got right. we got to get going because I know I got to. I, I, I hope you'll come down here.